Welcome into another episode of the Ryan Ripken Show. I think it's episode 71, honestly, losing track of all of it. But 
How are you doing? Happy Thursday, almost Friday. We got a jam-packed show for you guys today, and we're doing 3 p.m. today because of actually the Orioles play at 7. We know a lot of people are going to watch that game. I'm actually doing uh, the pregame radio show on 105.7 The Fan from 6 to 7 leading up to the game. You can listen on the Odyssey app or on the radio if you're in Baltimore. But let's talk about what we are talking about today. Uh, the Orioles in Boston, things have been going well, but the biggest story is Jackson Holiday making his debut with the Baltimore Orioles, and we get to talk with Matt Holiday, Jackson's father, who's one heck of a baseball player himself, by the way, seven-time All-Star. We are planning on talking to him regardless. Just happens to be at a very convenient time. At 4 p.m., Tim Kirchin's going to come on as well to talk about baseball and some other notes around uh, the MLB. And then, of course, we're going to preview because guess who's coming to town, everyone? The Brew Crew and some familiar faces. D.L. Hall is slated to start against the Baltimore Orioles this weekend. And Joey Ortiz is also with the Brewers as well. Uh, I think that covers it. And why don't we welcome in who is with us right now in studio? From right to left, we have Zach. Oh, that I do it. Did it wrong Every again. Every time. Zach and Kevin, how are we doing, guys? Doing, doing good. I have uh, a lot less hair. You do. Yeah, <laughs> we. Th th there's been the hair over the past uh, week that has been chopped off from this side of the and, room, and and, no you, and and you, Brad, also got a haircut. Oh yeah. I did. So. There's there's a lot less hair. I'm also sorry. I'm trying to start controversy on Ravens Twitter. So, uh oh, I'm the, oh. Uh, Kevin. Yeah. and Brad, good to see you. Oh, you too, my man. Appreciate you. Uh, wearing blue today. Yes. It's uh, it's it's uh, what do they call it? National uh, Donation Awareness Month. Tomorrow's oh, yeah. the actual day for it. So you guys, oh. uh, you know, not a donor, you probably should consider being one. Hey, that's actually really cool. Did not know that. Learning something new each day. Yeah, I got people close to me that are involved in it. And so it's like, uh, you know, there's actually and in our community, there was a six year old girl who just passed away last two weeks ago, mm -hmm. donated seven of her organs and tissue and everything else. It was all over Facebook. You guys, I'm not giving up any information you don't, wouldn't already know, but like, it's pretty cool. She saved seven, seven lives. So that is that's awesome. amazing. Wow. That's yeah. great. Hero. I mean, that, that's a that story that ends up becoming a good one, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing in, in, you know, I know I don't like to try to get too deep here on this case, but there's sometimes a beauty that can come out of a tragedy. Yeah. And in this case, when you can make an impact in someone else's life like this, it makes you really consider it when when things look bad, how you can impact somebody else that you might not even know. Yep. And maybe it is someone you know at the same time. Um, some other things, I guess we'll talk about some other housekeeping as well. We have a couple new introductions to the show as far as hey, guys, we have a new sponsor part of the show we will explain that a little bit later and we also are getting subscriptions up and running brad i think we'll just we can discuss that probably after our guest at yes at 3 we'll do that in the middle of the show perfect 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 uh and guys if you're new to the channel hit that like and subscribe button and by the way i couldn't forget our, our friend just because i brought up at 315 and 4 jason benowitz for the ones that entered in the contest you have to listen to the show going on right now so make sure you're hopping on. Jason's going to join us around 4.30 to announce the winners for Jackson Holiday's debut to go to the game on Friday. Uh, also, we got to figure out who won the who who the actual person is that won the March Madness contest. Did we figure that out yet? Uh, that That's one actually that we're trying to figure out. Still, I've been trying to contact this person for a long time, so I have no idea exactly where uh where to do that so we're gonna we're gonna do our homework we know someone wants to win the 200 dollars <laughs> gift card for the iron rooster yeah for the march madness it was not rocco thank goodness we're all feeling much better about that yeah i do want to say like you won come claim i feel i'm surprised no one has like messaged it's us a great and been prize. like it's a great, it's a great prize. prize 200 dollars to the iron rooster that's no i'm so happy that rocco didn't win because yes. the last thing i wanted to hear was just him gloat for the next year it would have been the worst he'll, he'll, he'll find a way he'll find yeah. a way it yeah. would have slowly turned into the worst idea we've ever had if Rocco won that. Yeah, well, for, fortunately he didn't, and uh, I got to look up the name. I, I, we should have thought that a little bit more, at least attaching the name to or a, a contact information. The person, we have no contact, but you know what? We'll be detectives today. We'll figure it out. Send us a DM on, on X. Send, send Ryan a DM on X, at Ryan Ripley. That's it. That'd be great. Uh, guys, so uh, overall, it's been a very eventful. We'll just do a quick, quick, a brief before we, we bring on our guests then. Uh, so the Orioles are in Boston. Uh, the fire alarms are going off first off because the Orioles lost two games in Pittsburgh. It's a long season. We, we everyone take a deep breath and what they do, they won the first two games of the season. That's now three of four series for the Baltimore Orioles uh, being victorious. Mm -hmm. Corbin Burns was dynamite. 
Yes, last night the hero was Jordan Westberg, but I mean the big story, obviously, Jackson Holiday got to make his debut, and it was a really special moment that uh, I know a lot of people, uh, especially that um, I don't know. I sometimes get not that I get choked up on a loss with words for it, but I I think it's one of the most special things in sports is when you realize it. And I actually got to talk to Buck Britton because Buck Britton actually was my manager in Triple A. Uh, sorry, in Double A and Low A, he's the Triple A manager now of the tides right and buck's getting good at doing these things right he's the one that's been breaking the news to a lot of these prospects but i was on buck's first team that he managed in 2018 um but it's just the moment when you know it it, it comes full circle and it's surreal and you know personally for me i always wish that i'd have that opportunity but i love seeing the reactions of the people when they finally live out a dream yeah you know and i think it's just the coolest thing regardless of what happens it's one of the coolest things in sports so um the Orioles won. Jackson got his first RBI. It's fifth comeback win in the last seven games. Kind of crazy. Yeah, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a while. Apparently, this 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 offense got some problems, right? Really, court, this court, team sucks. Yeah. It's terrible. Throw the whole team Send out. Send them apparently. all down. Send them all down. Yeah. Every reaction. Just blow it yeah. all up. We yeah. lose two straight in Pittsburgh, and you would have thought that the Orioles just set the record for most <laughs> losses in a season. I was like, <laughs> the way the fan base was reacting, I was like, guys. We still haven't, games still haven't gotten swept in, in like almost two years. So it's pretty <laughs> great. Well, and I try to tell people this too. Um, last last little part here is for everyone that's even explaining about the struggles of players. First off, baseball is so damn hard. Yeah. And I can't keep reemphasizing that enough. And for all the people that love my dad, you know, I'm like, hey, I love him. You know, most days I always love him. <laughs> like him's a different part at times. But uh, even for him when he came up, you know, the guy was barely hitting over 100 for the first month of his career in yeah. the big leagues. And he actually, when he first got called up in 81, was was lucky to hit maybe ninth, or then he was riding the bench, right? So just giving context. Early in the season, you gotta let you gotta let things play out. You gotta let things play out, and you gotta have a little bit of faith. That's kind of where it starts. All right, why don't we? It kind of leads into having our guest on, which again, ironically, we're gonna have him on regardless. And then it just so happened that Jackson, Jackson de de debuts. But the bigger thing is, you might know Jackson Holiday as being the number one overall prospect, but Matt Holiday. I believe seven time all star, um, one of the best players in my generation of watching baseball grow up. And so it's, it's with my honor to, to now introduce, I guess maybe it's a compliment now. I always think it is uh, Jackson Holiday's dad, there we go. Matt Holiday. <laughs> Let's bring on Matt for a second. Matt, how are we doing? Good. How are you guys doing? Uh, we're doing well. We're doing well. Where are you? Is it raining? And is this the hotel room? Or are you at the stadium? Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm in the hotel room. I haven't I haven't ventured over yet. They don't start batting practice for the visiting team until like right around five. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna head over there in a little bit and and see if I can't get in to watch batting practice. But so far so good on the rain. So uh, I'm just uh, hanging in the hotel for a little longer. Yeah. So I knew initially uh, if we if were going to have you on today anyway, and you were going to be watching Ethan's game, I think is what you said, right? Yeah. Yeah. We a were little... supposed to be at a tournament. Yeah. In Oklahoma. <laughs> well, you're not in Oklahoma. Like, what, can you explain a little bit to people the fire drill, the, the scramble that happens when you get the call and all of a sudden it's a great moment for you guys, right? Yeah. You know, if you heard me talking about this is a moment that you, you dream of, especially for Jackson, but walk us through that a little bit. Yeah, so uh, Ethan had a game uh, so two nights ago, and we were at a restaurant in Stillwater having dinner, and I was watching Jackson's game, his uh, Norfolk game, uh, on my phone, and it ended. And so we were eating, and, and five minutes later, uh, my phone rings, and it says, you know, Jackson on it. And I'm like, wow, that was quick. You know, he's usually pretty in and out after the game, but I was like, wow, that's, that's super quick. I, I didn't even – I'm an idiot. Like, I didn't even think twice about it. Um, but I was like, Hey bud. And he's like, Hey, and I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, well, uh, they just told me I'm going up tomorrow. And I was like, you know, obviously that's uh, what, that's great. You know, awesome. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, did they film it? And at the time he didn't know. And he was like, no, I don't think so. Buck just called me in and, and, uh, <laughs> told me to, that I was going up and, and, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going up tomorrow. And so, uh, you know, we, obviously talk about it. He talks to his mom. Uh, I, I say, well, call your brother, call Ethan. And, you know, we had, we had Grayson and Reed with us. So, um, he called Ethan and, and so we, you know, it sets into the motion of how are we going to get from Stillwater, Oklahoma to Boston in time for the game tomorrow. And this was, you know, at 10 o'clock or nine o'clock on, 
on uh, you know the night before opening day, so or for his opening opening game. So um, we start checking commercial flights. Getting from Stillwater to Boston is by you know six o'clock is almost impossible. So I have a couple <laughs> friends that have a private plane, so I'm, I never use this sort of uh, chip. So I, I called my my one friend who's who's older. Um, and I said, I said, Hey, Ken, I said, can we use your plane to go to Boston tomorrow? I, I, I hate to ask, but you know, I'm kind of up against it. And, uh, and he says, you know, he's got this kind of loud voice. He says, well, Matt, he said, let me check. I'm going to call you back. And I was like, oh, great. <laughs> great. So in the meantime, Leslie's like, you know, she's, could we fly out of Oklahoma city? Are we gonna have to drive to Dallas? Like, you know, what, what do we, you know, what's, how are we going to make this work? Um, so he calls me back and, and, and he says, well, I got, I got good news and I got bad news. And I was like, okay. He says, there's actually a plane going from Stillwater to Boston on a, a dead leg or whatever they call it, where there's nobody on it. It's going there anyways. Um, it's a seven seater. Uh, it's going from, from Oklahoma to Boston tomorrow anyways. And I was like, what could possibly be the bad news? He says, well, the bad news is it's leaving at 4.30 tomorrow morning. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> hey, and now. I said, I said, well, we'll take it. You know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll happy to, uh, to jump on that. So we, uh, you know, Pat went home, packed our stuff, uh, got the kids ready, kind of informed uh, everybody that we were going and, and uh, jumped on the plane, got up at 4 the next morning. We were on the plane, and and uh, outside of some some pretty pretty uh, bad turbulence getting out of Oklahoma, we had a smooth flight in Boston, and and we're at the you know the the hotel by noon, and had lunch with Jackson, and uh, got to go watch BP and and uh, and see the game. So it uh, it was quick, and and thankfully uh, we were the Lord. I think the Lord provided us an opportunity to fly on a on a for some reason. I don't know if you guys know, but there's not a ton of planes sitting in Stillwater, heading to Boston. No. Uh, we don't have what? Uh, a lot no of action. <laughs> yeah, we, don't have, we don't have a ton of airport action in Stillwater. Yeah, I, I can see that. No, it's no no offense to Stillwater. Yeah, you're right. I don't think that's like the, the hot spot that people are like, you know what? I'm going to fly in and fly out. There's not a lot of flights going in and out, but I think the end of the day, you got to be there. You got to be there on time. Um, I, I think, a, uh, and if you heard me talking about it, it's a special moment, right? And I, I guess I, I've seen the moments of, the photos of you with Jackson as a kid. And I have my similar ones as a kid running around. I actually had blonde hair back in the day. Don't know what happened. And we know what happens to Ripkins. They just go bald, Matt. So I'm a little yeah, bit nervous. On, yeah, I know. Me too. But you, you pull it off though. That's the thing. I'm not, I don't, I don't know about that. We got time to figure that out. Um, yeah. Eventually you just have to deal with it. You know, you just go with it and hope it, hope it looks good. And then, you know, you wear a lot of hats. Okay. Well, I was very good at doing that, but you know, at least from your perspective, then we'll talk about this because I went back your debut, if I'm not mistaken, against the Cardinals, 0 for three with a walk. Am I? Did I do that right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I thought so. I had to go back to baseball almanac. But can you just describe the feeling? Because I know Jackson can describe it his own way. But you're there. You're in that final mo that moment, um, and watching that now with your son. Can you? Is there a moment there? It's full circle, mm -hmm. but also maybe just explain to people. Kind of what all is going through your mind of, um, you know, you're living out a dream that you've set forth when you first started playing the sport. Yeah, I mean, I think it was it was a little different for me. I mean, I I had, you know, five years in the minor leagues. I had a full Tommy John. I missed a year. I there was times where I didn't think that, you know, I started to doubt whether it was ever going to happen. And and so um, I was nervous as all get out. Uh, Jackson seemingly feels very comfortable with the, you know, I mean, he, he grew up in it a lot like you did where he, you know, he, he's very used to that environment. The, the third deck on the stadium doesn't really intimidate him. He's, you know, he's had just kind of run through the minor leagues with, with pretty good success. Um, so it's almost like he's, he was very calm yesterday. I'm sure he was a little nervous, um, you know, to start the game. He, he's just a very even keel kid in general so yeah uh he, he didn't seem too too anxious at lunch and and was kind of just excited to get out there and play i on the other hand was a nervous wreck and uh you know could barely feel my feet in the box and and you know one of those deals so um i don't think we're we probably handled it this similarly uh i know the excitement of playing in your first major league game and so sort of 
this uh, fulfillment of dream, like you talked about, and and the passion uh, to to play pro baseball, and um, so there is this moment where you're like, wow, I'm really like I'm really running on the field. I'm really a player on the team. I'm gonna play in this game, and um, that that just kind of hits you. That's that's really cool. It's, it's it's almost unexplainable of like accomplishing your goal since you were a little kid. Uh, but he's, you know, he hand, like I said, he handled it really well and, and, uh, didn't seem too nervous and, and, uh, got out there and got a, you know, got a defensive player out of the way, but, uh, you really want that first hit. I want that first hit for him so he can kind of take a breath and, and relax a little bit. I had, I, my first two games, I didn't get a hit and, and I was, you know, of course I was, cause Larry Walker was coming back from injury and Preston Wilson was coming back from injury. So in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, if, if I don't get a hit soon, I'm going back to the minor leagues. And uh, so after the second game, I think I was 0 for 7 to start out. And then the third game, I got three hits and was able to sort of breathe a little bit and, and get it going from there. So um, it is, uh, it's exciting and, and, and nerve wracking. And then obviously as a parent, uh, it's, it's even more so because you have absolutely no control. So you, you, you just, you're sitting there and, and you, you know, at least when it's you, you can kind of go like, I need to get this together and, and, and do something here. Uh, when you're a parent, you just want it for your kids. I, I think for me, it's yeah. just because I know how important it is to him. I want him to have success. And, um, but it's, it's, it's much more anguishing, I think, as a parent than as a player. Yeah, I was going to say, they, they showed you guys a couple times, and you're sitting there, but you're kind of covered up. And I'm like, I can only imagine the thoughts that are going through your head, pitch by pitch, at bat by at bat. Just kind of, it's it's a different type of stress, and I, and I understand. But I'll tell you this: one thing, the two compliments my family's always told me, and and I truly believe it in baseball, is your peers talking about you as a player when you're out there playing, and then the second thing is the 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 notion of do you quote unquote belong? Do you look like you belong? And I actually saw Jackson last year uh, playing in his first big league spring training, and the first thing I noticed, I didn't care about the results. I just looked at him and went like, man he looks like he belongs here. And, and that was something that really stuck out to me. His demeanor's great. Uh, and I love the fact he got a strikeout, he got an RBI. And as you know, if you're, if you're going to uh, be in the big leagues a long time, he's going to have a ton more of both of those. But let's hope tonight in Fenway, it's going to be the first time getting his first professional knock. Uh, got a couple of questions more for you, Matt, and then we'll let you go enjoy P- BP, and uh, which should be a fun night in Fenway. But Zach, do you have a question? Yeah, uh, Matt, thanks for uh, joining the show. Uh, over the offseason, a video we saw in the chat, I love this question. Over the offseason, there was a video of a metal bat home run derby. And you obviously, you were holding your own in there. Do you still like to compete with Jackson and Ethan and let them know that, you know, at the end of the day, you're you're still number one? Or how do <laughs> how often do the competitions happen? You know, when I when I knew that was going to happen, I hadn't been hitting at all. And so when I knew that this was going to be videoed and it was going to be on YouTube, I was like, I better start hitting, first of all, so I don't tear an oblique or hurt myself uh, trying to hit it as far as I can with a light aluminum bat. Um, So I started training a little bit for it and hitting a few days with the boys. Uh, But yes, I know they framed it where they're not, I don't know if they like sort of said who won the actual competition, but it was me. Um, oh, and so, uh, yeah. no, no shock there, by the way, <laughs> we had, a, we had a great time. The guy was, the guys were super cool. And, and, uh, it, it was fun. We, had, we actually, when they said when they were coming, it was, I think it was in October sometime and we're going to do it at night. I was like, wow, this is really risky. I mean, in Stillwater, Oklahoma, it could be 30 degrees with the wind blowing straight in and we might not hit any homers. So I was, uh, I was a little bit like, uh, you know, like, I don't know how this is going to go. And for some crazy reason, it was it was actually a beautiful night. And uh, and and we had a, a favorable little light wind and and had a great time doing it. But, yeah, I, we compete all the time. So we have a pickleball uh, court and in, in the barn where we hit and, and I'm big into that. And, and we always sort of transition into some sort of competition of pickleball or basketball. And um, we're always competing and, and always doing stuff and, and have activities and we got people rolling through to hit and then, you know, t- turns into pickleball and then wiffle ball. And then, uh, but yeah, we, we compete all the time. Sometimes it, it gets a little, it gets a little hot. Uh, it gets a little uh, contentious, but um, I think that's what happens when you have uh, three, you know, and, and then our little guy 
uh, Reed also, we have, we have pretty competitive males in our, in our family. You don't say that sounds, I I've heard that <laughs> before. I can sense it. My dad never yeah. let me win anything. Um, still to this day. And it was, it was really <laughs> gratifying when I did out there. Maybe this will be a different time, Matt, but I broke my dad's nose playing basketball too. That was not gratifying, but in the moment, I was didn't like, you know it. what? Don't go there. I didn't. I didn't hate it in the moment. <laughs> um, I, I guess I, I got. I got two thoughts for you. And this was kind of a now. Now that you're spending this time with your your, your sons, and, and Jackson obviously as quick as he got to the big leagues, and you have Ethan right behind. You ever think like, dang, you know, could you have played a little bit longer? Maybe if they were going to move this quickly through. I, I thought that the other day. I even said it to my wife. I thought, you know, if I'd have known Jackson was going to get there they're this quick. I, I could have tried to hang on. And then I was like, eh, I don't know. You know, I, I think the, the thing for me, it was more about being away from your family and the things you miss than necessarily yeah. like the, the physical challenge of, of competing. And, 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 you know, I, I feel like I can still, I mean, I feel like I can still hit and hit the ball the way I used to. But um, I think for me, it was, it was more, the retirement was more of, I'm tired of missing, you know, a lot of things that I don't want to miss with, with the, yeah. what it takes time wise. But yeah, I thought about that the other day. I thought, man, if, if I could have held on, uh, you know, <laughs> as much as I play pickleball and basketball, like I feel like I could probably still grind through, you know, some sort of DH schedule where I play a couple times a week, you know? And so, um, it would have been, it would have been something, but you know, I, I like I said, I, I, uh, it's, it's amazing how fast he was able to get there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it was uh i don't even know what the right phrase is it just it didn't it took no time at all to be honest um and it's really cool and i'm, I'm excited because jackson's not going to be the only one it looks like who knows a lot can happen in the next two years but ethan is um ethan's off to a tremendous start and um not going to put any pressure on with that but it's got to be really cool for you and what is it something in the water in, in still water or is it more so of you know genetics i mean what's going on with you guys it's like the holiday family now is just producing these ball players that are really stinking good yeah i mean i think it goes back to the whole nature versus nurture thing you know oh. where you know I, I think that they grew up at the ballpark you know particularly the two older ones because i was in the prime of my career and and they were with me a lot and and i was always grateful because both the rockies and the cardinals were very generous with letting me mm -hmm. have my kids and and letting the boys come and have free reign to kind of come and do whatever they wanted and they got a chance to be around incredible players. Um, they got a chance to be on the field and, and kind of have this vision of what could happen, um, you know, as far as being able to uh, make it to the major leagues. And, and, and so, uh, but I also think they've, they have God given ability. You know, I yeah. think that they have been blessed with the ability to play um, at a high level, which I don't think is the case all the time. Um, so I, I think it's both. I, I think the fact that, that they grew up around the game and have a passion to practice, that they love the game, uh, combined with the fact that they've, they've been given, um, they've been blessed with the physical tools uh, to compete with the guys on the highest levels. And so um, I don't think it's, it's anything, um, you know, super scientific. Uh, I think it's just the fact that they, they grew up around it. They love it. They love to practice it, which I always think is, is the biggest for me, if, if you love to practice, then you can get better. The yeah. ones that, you know, they like to play and, and they don't love it. They don't love the grind of the day in, day out of, of the cage and, and what it takes, you know, as far as fielding and all those things. Uh, it's going to be a real challenge. And so um, I, I think uh, to answer your question, I shoot, I don't I don't know. I, I just try to try to uh, encourage their passion, which happens to be baseball, which I share with them. So that that makes it all the more fun to be their dad. That's awesome. And I'm sorry, I stole Rocco, our friend behind the chat here. I stole Rocco's question. So sorry, Rock, but you know, it is what it is. You're a good kid. We're going to remove you for a second. See ya. Uh, he, he, he's our, he's our, he's, uh, he's one of our other, we got a, we got a team of about five in here, uh, Matt. So just to go around, it's Brad, um, Kevin, yeah, we can't know. see I, Kevin. I love Kev the show. Yeah. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. oh, let's all go. Right. All right. Yeah. Thank you. That's Thank you. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. We appreciate that. And maybe people that are listening hear that. Uh, we, we try to just have the conversations and, and to tell more stories with it. But now I'll let you get out of here. But the last thing, because this was, I thought, really cool. Um, obviously, the number seven means a lot to both of our families. And for you specifically, I know that's a number that for you, for Jackson, and for my family, for those that don't know, if all the Orioles, mm -hmm. no one had worn number seven 
in Baltimore since my grandfather. And so it was not officially retired. It was just unofficial. No one just ever wore it. Um, but I, I believe uh, Matt Jackson called my dad, I think, from what I, what I heard. And I just thought it was really cool. And even talking with my dad about it, uh, we felt that, yeah, you know, and, and Bill said it really well, you know, if there was going to be someone to take it over, it's going to take a special person. Um, we feel like Jackson's is is that. I mean, you just want to talk a little bit on that. I know that I guess you you had a couple of nice things to say about our family, but uh, I think re it's reciprocated. I think that it, it's a really cool moment uh, kind of for me in, in Baltimore Orioles history. Yeah, you know, so for me, it goes back to the fact that your dad was one of my favorite players growing up. I played infield as a younger player. I was actually drafted as a third baseman. And he was the big guy that played infield. Like, I, I don't know if people that are listening to this remember, but your dad was really like the first big shortstop slash third baseman. Um, right. And then he set the stage for, for Alex Rodriguez and Derek Jeter and some of these guys that got bigger. Um, and so I was a huge fan of your dad. And, and that was, he was the poster on my wall. And, and so I was always a big fan of your dad. Got a chance to meet him in 07. I think uh, he was calling uh, maybe the division series. Um, and, and I tell I, Leslie said to me yesterday, your dad texted me yesterday. She said, oh, look, dad's geeking out. Uh, Cal Ripken just texted him. So um, <laughs> I've been a huge, huge fan of your dad. And then um, obviously I wore number seven with the, with the Cardinals and and, uh, and and my last year with the Rockies. Um, and Jackson is, and Ethan have both worn it kind of coming up because that's, you know, they want to be what their dad was. And, and so – um, and just thinking about, um, you know, with him wearing seven with the Orioles and, and what your family has meant to baseball in general. Um, and then hopefully uh, that we're also a baseball family and, and the boys are coming up a lot like uh, your family. And then, um, you know, I, I think, look, I, I thought the most important thing is, is Jackson is a great kid, a great person, plays the game really hard. I thought he would represent um, your family, your grandpa, your dad, your brother or your uncle. And and in a way that would honor your family, and and so I just think it's 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 really cool how baseball and, and families and and people that love the game, uh, for him to get to wear that number, for it to sort of shine a light back on your grandpa and back on your family, and now that Cal is involved with the ownership and and where he should be, and, and a huge part of the organization and um, everything that Billy does on the network and talking baseball, I just think it's uh, really an honor for for him and for our family to be able to sort of take on this legacy of him wearing seven in Baltimore, hopefully for a long time and, and, uh, and, and be some sort of, um, I don't know, like Cal was there. And, and obviously he's got a long way to go to ever have a career like, like your dad, but um, hopefully that's, you know, sort of what happens. And, and like I said, we're, we as a family, and I know Jackson is, is very humbled and honored to wear that number. Yeah. I mean, I, I think from just these stories and even before talking to you today, our families have a lot of similarities on on the work ethic. You got to put the work in and then the passion and love for the game. And really, that's what senior embodied in Baltimore and for for what they're trying to build the Baltimore, the, the Oriole way. So I'm really excited. We're ecstatic. Uh, it should be this is the first chapter for, for, for you and your family. And I can't wait to see what what, you know. The, the book's going to look like for Jackson because I just think he's getting started. Are, uh, are you going to be coming to Baltimore for the yeah, series be, next? Yeah, I'll be there. Uh, we're we're going to fly to Baltimore tomorrow. We'll probably watch Friday and Saturday and then got to get back uh, Sunday for the kids going back to school. So we are going to come and and, uh, and see the, the first game and, and maybe the second game in Baltimore. So looking forward to that. Awesome. Well, we'll be there too. Uh, awesome. we, we wanted to be able to be there. So hopefully get a chance to talk with you. And I'd love to even pick your brain, a conversation between the fathers versus sons. Maybe we'll have to set that up at some point because my dad, uh, oh gosh, you're making me think of a lot of stories, but Hey, go enjoy BP, go enjoy Fenway park. And we'll see you down here in Baltimore in the next couple of days. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks for having me on. Love the show. All right. Thanks, Matt. All Matt, right. Holiday, Thank everybody. You, Matt. That was awesome. You know what? I mean, he was he was casting Calvin up a little bit too much for my life. Yeah, yeah, that guy, that guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it was great. I, I, honestly, like I thought that his response to you know the number seven was was awesome. You know, I'm sure that makes you feel good too. But like it was just just cool to see that that moment between the two of you. You know, with just baseball families. I thought that was really cool, man.
Yeah, you know, and I'm sorry if I took it over more and stole Rocco's question at the same point. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's okay. He's a good kid. He's a good kid. But in all honesty, though, yes, I mean, the, the number seven has embodied a lot. Yeah. And, and for those, we haven't really talked about it as much. Obviously, Bill on MLB Network, I thought, was was very well-spoken about the situation. And I've had a lot of people ask me, like, well, Ryan, well, what, what do you think? And um and even some of the Orioles, people that still work with the Orioles, were even asking my dad, well, you know, what do you what do you think of it? And for me, senior passed when I was before I was six. So a lot of the stories that I hear now are from his former players. Like you hear Jim Palmer come up and talk, Eddie Murray talk about how he was senior was a father figure to him yeah. and helped really kind of pave the way. So the the memory of senior lives on through so many people he's impacted. And so for the Orioles, that's that's kind of when we talk, we mentioned golden age baseball the other day. You know, this could be the new era of grading homegrown homegrown talent and the Orioles going back to a glory time that was back in the 60s, 70s, and early 80s where all they did was produce talent. And that was something that Senior took a lot of pride of being involved in. And now to have kind of it's like a prophecy. You have one of the most talented players to come through the organization in quite some time. You know, if you can say it's Gunner, you can say it's Jackson as being a second base shortstop, whatever he's going to be. And the last person who really did that at 20 was my dad. You can say Machado as well. Mm -hmm. Machado was the other one. Yeah. But it just felt like because of where the team is now, it all feels kind of right. Um, and the biggest thing is we want the legacy to live on. But the Holiday family, I mean, look, look, listen to Matt. Also, yeah, you're damn right. He's not going to lose a home run battle to his kids. <laughs> that was, Are you kidding? That was no. so great that he was like, I, I wasn't sure if they really – showed who won but it was me that was yeah. real that was incredible yeah hey can we get well, let's, let's get rocco back in here for a second rocco hey. Hey. Bro, my favorite part was you brought rocco on screen to make fun of him in front of matt holiday and then took him off that, I know, that was literally like when gally was on here and ryan ryan's like this is kevin you interact with a lot and this is how short he is actually <laughs> <laughs> like the first interaction <laughs> ryan has that little pettiness to him hey i, I do a little bit but you know what though rock like you're hearing him like like he he loves the show, which is uh, amazing, guys. You know, and that and that's that's a, um, you know, maybe I'm getting a little more sentimental. That that's because of the work that our, our group has put in and this community that we put in. And Alan, right. hey, Alan. Hey. appreciate you, Alan. Alan, appreciate we appreciate you. you. Appreciate everyone who's joining the membership yes, right I now. Think, you guys, I think rock. it's time to drop that uh, that news. I think Brad, do you want to explain? Yeah, what please that do. Is? Yeah, so guys, uh, for those of you who are watching, you get an opportunity to help support the channel even more so than you already have by watching us. Uh, you know, obviously, you all know that money, you know, is just necessary. We got to pay for things. We got to pay for the rent in the studio and so on and so forth. We want to invest in upgrading equipment and that sort of thing. So we're not uh, moving one singular camera all the way around for Ryan's review. We are doing that. Yeah. Quite it often, is a pain in the, the ass. So if you want to help us pay for a new camera, that would be great. And you can do so by signing up for our channel memberships. And in return, you'll get loyalty badges. We're working on that as well as some cool emojis. But you want to join the second tier, the holy shirts and pants tier is what I call that. Ooh, did oh, you now? That's good. That is <laughs> good. And, and you guys thought that was corny. You kidding me? It still is corny, but people are going to buy into it. Uh, but that is, it's six ninety nine. I mean, look, you, 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 that's that's a Starbucks. Starbucks, yeah. Yeah, you know, so uh, not a lot to you, but it means the world to us. And in return, you'll get a cl exclusive uh, members-only videos, members-only live streams, shout-outs too. And, uh, you know, we might sneak in a couple of other things in there for our, our Holy Shirts and Pants crew. So um, really uh, love that. and Love the, the folks that have already kind of, uh, started joining even though uh, we didn't even talk about it yet. So that was yeah. pretty cool. I appreciate. I saw Jim Riley. I mean, dude's a stud. Love, yeah. Love, love Jim. Yes. And we'll we'll pull Please all these. We'll pull too. all these up. Just yeah. To, and you know, recognize. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's it's amazing. Alan was number one. He that saw was, it first. Yep, Alan was the first member, so he'll have that. Cue, of course. Q. Q. Got it Q. In there. Appreciate you. You <laughs> and so and, and in all honesty too, and also by the way, Jim, whether you like it or not, you're gonna be a part of it. Thank you again to just another quantum wave function. Yeah, yes, this is amazing. Jim Riley, he's gonna be on soon. Yes. He actually, Jim, maybe see you tomorrow down at the park. It, it should be a nice day. And I'll actually, guys, guess who's gonna be at Pickles doing pregame? Matt Holiday. And Matt Holiday. <laughs> 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 oh gosh, well, no, Rocco, it's just Ryan. Yeah. Well, and maybe Rocco. Rocco, you gonna come on down? 
Not after okay. what you pulled today. Absolutely <laughs> not. We're done here. We're done here. We are absolutely done here. Yeah, well, uh, we couldn't say this when uh, Matt was on, but nobody fucking cares, Rocco. Uh, <laughs> all right. Raven Lunatic. Another one. And I think what we're going to do with this, too, is you, you get a specific, you know, when you join, you get like a new membership badge. Then when it's a month, you get another one. And two months, oh, another yeah, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So, yes. yeah. So the way that I think you can make emojis, those badges. So we're going to do is I think, and Zach, I think, is going to help me with it, yeah. where... We're going to do it in the order, the reverse order that we joined the team. So like a new member would oh, be yeah. my face for a oh, month. Oh, you, you, you upgrade to Clap Zach Kevin. after a Clap month. Kevin. Someone just joined. I, oh, sorry. I, come on, Kevin. Yeah. I was, I was Kevin. explaining the membership. I was explaining it. So it'll be me and then Zach and then you'll get Rocco's face and then you'll get Brad. And then obviously Ryan being the, the OG here. Nice. Is, uh, I know Brad's an OG too. I still happens. really want to put Rocco first. Wow. No, that's, you know what? I think that every membership should get a nice personalized video. Every single person that joins should get a. Do you want to do that? No, no, no. I'm saying from Zach, maybe from you oh. as well, Kevin. I think that would welcome everybody with open arms. There actually is an option for a membership trailer. So maybe Zach and I will do that. Whoa. Yeah, we'll say. Hey, we'll do. now. Hey, Zach, now. We are Zach cooking up on Cameo. I do want to point out with this haircut, me and Kevin are looking like twins kind of right now. Oh, this that is why I have to keep the is, mustache. Yeah. Are we all the uh, no hack? We're today? the same is height, Brad too, so it's confusing. Brad, Brad's wearing a hat today. Oh I am wearing a hat today. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Hey, uh, you know what that? I'm not doing? I'm not wearing it this way, and I don't look like a Unabomber. Oh, my God. <laughs> When's the last time you washed that thing? <laughs> hey, you know, that builds character, Rocco. Yeah, you what, is your, what is your problem? You wash man? your hats? This hat's like 15 no, years old, and it's my favorite hat of all time. Is it the yeah, because it the of because of how it, how weathered it is, and it's the most That's comfortable fair. one. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just asking. When's the last time you washed that thing? I wasn't like. Oh, uh, sure. You don't. You don't course, wash hats like this. Yeah, you were just washing. Okay, okay. Before we actually keep going, by the way, uh, if you're new to the channel, though, hit that like and subscribe button. We're our, our guest list guys. Not toot the own horn. It's been actually knocking on wood. It's been great. Oh, and Matt Holiday today. It's hilarious the fact that that's not even hilarious, but maybe it's just a coincidence. Maybe that's just how the baseball world works. Literally, Matt Holiday was just going to come on. Just to talk about uh, baseball and his son in the in AAA, and then mm -hmm. stop traffic. He gets called up here, and I said, "Hey, I even said, I said, hey, if you're busy because you want to enjoy the moment, I'll give you this one this one rain check, just one time, Matt, one time." But he, he's like, "No, I'm in." So we changed the time, and then in the meantime, we added Tim Kirch into the lineup yeah. at 4 p.m. So hell yeah, um, it, it. it's been really great. And Sean, thank you. And for those, we have this on audio, by the way, also. So if you are driving your car, if you're driving your Adams Jeep, by the way, if, if you're doing that, don't watch and drive. Don't Kevin, you don't. What? I had so I had to put the arm under. I was I was busy trying. Okay, I, that was. I was. <laughs> I was busy because I saw Rick asked how to become a channel member, so oh, I was going to no. explain, and so I was moving my hand, and we were all riding the Jeep, and my hand was So what happens was like, when you ride the Jeep like this? Well, this is, what is that, this? That's ten, what you're off-roading. 10 and 4. You're off-roading. Yeah, 10 and like 4. It. But okay, Rick, to become a channel member, uh, actually, I can't see it because- so You just hit the join button next to subscribe. Yeah, there's a join button next to subscribe. Literally says join. I guess Cube just joined again, so that must be no. for the holy sh shirts he, and pants. He's so. our first holy shirts yeah. and pants. Holy shirts and pants, Cube. Holy, holy shirts, shirts and pants. Holy shirts and pants. Where did shirts? Clap, 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 clap. I'm Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Rock. I appreciate that. You need to get Kevin in an Adams Jeep and see how he actually drives a car. I think that would be oh, a great demo we for do. Well, so in the you, Orioles Jeep. Yeah, so, the so Orioles. you know what? Call so you know, Chuck. So you know yeah, what, Chuck? Please. Chuck and Matt and Steve up there at Adams Jeep of Maryland, we actually said, hey, can we do a we do a, a show up there? Can we do a little bit of activities? I go, sure, we'll get the band together. We'll go on up there. We'll do a show up in Aberdeen, Maryland at Adams Jeep. We'll get Kevin in the Jeep and see how far he sinks into the seat. Hey, we can take the monster truck up. I am, I am for my driving. I am notoriously known as we clap for be, for driving the speed limit. And my friends do not like that. They Doesn't surprise me. Go above the speed limit. Yeah, I drive. I drive next to Kevin uh, when we like. We do. We go, yeah, we drive next to each other. For, and Zach, for a few. Zach always goes <laughs> right past me. Kevin, Every time. Kevin does drive the exact speed limit on the highway. Uh, that is not surprising. <laughs> safe, not safe, safe driving, at everyone. All. Safe driving. Zach, yeah. from the guy we called a narc, does it really surprise? Well, the guy I called a narc, does it really surprise? I was gonna say, and, then, and, then, and then dapped me up. Like, <laughs> oh, you like that? You, you like that? You dapped him back. <laughs> that, was, that is true. I, I hand up on that. I did. Kevin I didn't really know what was going on. Follower I know. Unbelievable. Good for you, Kev. Thank we you. Love All right. So before we. 
I mean, this is just fantastic. The holy Alan shirts again. and pants. Yeah, we're, holy we're shirts gonna... and pants again for Alan. Oh, holy, holy shirts. shirts and pants. Yep, and I think that's such a great way to describe it, Brad. Kudos on that. That's yeah. fantastic. Thanks, man. Uh, you know what I love though? This is the growth of all this. I know we're going on and on. I know it's a little bit different episode where we were trying to explain some different things, but this is kind of just the beginning for us. We're starting to grow more on the audio, which I was trying to say. So don't crash your Adams Jeep. So the lovely sign behind Zach there with a fresh haircut. Adams yeah. Jeep of Maryland is located up in Aberdeen. So when we do do a show up there, uh, you should tune in, maybe come on by. That'd be a lot of fun. And also they're doing that deal. Pre-owned vehicle. If you go and buy them and you say you love the Ryan Ripken show, or if you tell Chuck that you don't like Rocco, you will get a $500 gift card with your purchase. That's Chuck's rules, Rocco, not mine. You guys have a nice friendship building. I can I can, can I, sense it. Can I go there and tell Chuck that I don't like myself? And do you think he'll give me the same deal? He might. All right. He might. Well, I might have to try that out, honestly. Oh, gosh. Well, well, we'll continue to thank all of our members here. We have Tim Kirchin coming up here in just a little bit of time. But let's actually regroup for one second. Mm -hmm. Regroup. Baltimore Orioles, Boston, it's been pretty good. It's been pretty damn good, to say yeah. the least. Corbin mm -hmm. Burns, naughty good. And then the second game, I thought Cole Irvin pitched well, guys. I yeah. thought he pitched well. I thought he got squeezed. And I'm going to be mm -hmm. honest, I haven't met an umpire that I actually truly liked. Maybe there's another rip after dark story for that. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, it really pissed me off with that one. But it's not that I don't think they're nice people, but just when you're on when you're on the field, there's no friends between the lines, as Cedric Mullins would tell us. So I honestly like it, we're what two weeks two weeks ish into the baseball season, and Angel Hernandez has already like had two that are just like yeah. WTF mm -hmm. moments. Surprising I just don't understand. More. What's that? Surprising he doesn't have more already. Uh, like, yeah, he's just, just warming up. He's just warming up, Rocker. Well, He'll and they're there. just so True. bad. Like they're not even close. Like, yeah. I just don't know how, like, I know unions, whatever it is. I'm sure there's some legal reason. But, like, good God. Like, it's just bad for baseball. Yeah, yeah. Victoria. Yeah. Victoria, thank you. Hey, Victoria, thank you. Appreciate, appreciate you. Vic Victoria and Don C are always involved with the chat. We appreciate you guys. Yeah. One with the half swing was just disgusting. Like, that was yeah. Yeah. not awful. That was the one. I, I has, Was there another one that dropped uh, recently, like, the last couple of days? Because that was the one I saw go so viral because it's like angel hernandez being angel i think you tweeted it out rip it's just like i saw the comments and it was laughable it was brutal it was, so it was brutal so and to give context on all that like i love the human element of the game yeah don't get me wrong i love the human element and the the reviews were if they make a mistake to go back and review it the hard thing is on balls and strikes you have to do it every time. That's why they're saying the robo umps and all that well the but, but it becomes a problem when there's a lot of missed calls yeah and in this case, the, the the biggest moment, it was a three-run swing, essentially. Ryan O'Hearn, you can't just call an automatic strike, right? It was a 3-0 count, balls inside. Is that my, am I losing my mind already? Yeah. Yep. And then he gets out. Um, next inning would have been inning over for Irvin. Yep. Ball Two. four. Right. Yep. Ball yep. four, and then Tristan Casas, who I did a breakdown on. I feel like every person I do a breakdown on hits a home run. Yeah. It's the, the Ripken breakdown bump. It is, really is. You, you get a breakdown, Matt you're reversed. you're gonna you're gonna ball out. So Matt just reversed. It, it really is. Tyler O'Neill went deep, and then Tristan Casas did him earlier. Yeah. Went that, deep. Great player. That Oppo home run by by O'Neill was just unbelievable. Oppo home run over the wall. Oh no, oh, no, no Casas. No Casas. Casas. No, that was Casas. That was Casas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Either way, like the the Oppo, Oppo home run over the Green Monster is. That, that surprisingly is would have that's impressive. Surprisingly, it would have been a home run in two other stadiums. Usually, the, those type of uh, just pop ups that get out in the Green Monster, are like one of ones. But I think it said a uh, Houston and maybe Kansas City, or Toronto, something. Toronto. Yeah, Houston and Toronto. It gets out new with the blue team. Yeah, but it, yeah, to your point, like Cole Irvin, like just had a, a I mean, a couple of tough plays that just didn't go his way. I mean, yep. obviously the Jackson Holiday play was really tough too. It was just kind of in no man's land. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think that overall he had actually ended up having a decent game. Just just certain things just didn't go his way. Yeah, and then honestly, when when uh, I think it was Wong got the, the two RBI hit, the pitch was outside. The pitch was well outside, and he stuck his ass out, hit it through the hole, and two runs scored. So it's a really good piece of hitting. It wasn't a bad pitch by Cole. But right there, people are going to look at, oh, Cole was terrible. No, if you watch it and look back at it, I thought he did a lot of great things. And can, and I said this last night, but we do round of applause. Can I get a round of applause for our bullpen? Because I don't like oh, the slander yeah. here, by the way. 
Thank you. Thank and you. Listen. Keegan Aiken, dog. Like big, round dog. Big, big, big Mike and I. Big Mike dog. Had, had an exchange last night. So he said that I'm a good kid. He did tell you you were a good kid. I told him he was a good kid the other day. So. Well, and so here's the thing for the Orioles bullpen and Rock, we've talked about it. This they have really good arms. I want to read off. I guess I'll read off my tweet that I had earlier. Stop traffic. Can I find it for a second? They went four innings. They gave up one hit. Uh, one walk, no earned runs, nine strikeouts, including Craig Kimbrell. That he, you know, everyone's going, Oh, Craig Kimbrell. I don't know. He he Craig Kimbrell's look great, but Rock, this bullpen that the Orioles have. It's pretty good. How good, guys, by the way? It's top four in baseball, and it's more than people are, are really understanding. And I, I'm telling you what, Rip, to see the guys go out there and do what they did and to hold the Red Sox. The Red Sox, you know, they scored five off Irvin, and we saw that, and it was like, okay, this guy could be falling because the bats could not produce at that point in time. It was a 5 nothing game. In the very next inning, the bats start to chip away. And what does the bullpen do? They're like, all right. We're going to lock these guys down. We're going to let our offense go to work, and that's exactly what they did. And the O's bats, they scored seven unanswered runs, and that's what you want for the bullpen, man. Big Mike with the high socks. That's like Kyrie Irving with the jersey untucked. It, it's just mm. another level he taps he, into. So uh, for Mike to just be throwing gas, I mean, he was throwing cheese, whatever you want. You call it fuzz. Fuzz. It beautiful. Gas, diesel. One hit, three strikeouts, one inning, and then Keegan Aiken comes in. He gets the hold. He goes two innings strong with four strikeouts in one walk. And then Craig Kimbrell closing it out in the ninth. Never a doubt. Getting the save his second of the year. Going an inning, two strikeouts, 13 pitches thrown. That's called efficiency, people. That's what you want out of your bullpen. And yep. there were questions coming into this season. And there's, you know, there still could be going forward. It's do the Orioles need a, another middle reliever potentially? Do they need to bolster that part of their bullpen? Right now, I guess 10, 11 games into the season, two, two and a half weeks, the question or the answer for me is going to be no. These guys, let them go to work. Let them continue to bring their stuff. Yeah, Bauman's stuff was inappropriate. That That's a game Naughty. after. That's a game <laughs> after he didn't. Yeah, that's a game after he didn't have his best stuff or a, an outing after he didn't have his best stuff. So for Mike, getting that confidence back, going to work, showing he can be the big Mike we know he can because that's mm. the guy the Orioles are going to see. 90% of the time when he takes the mound, that's what you want from your bullpen. Well, and also, too, you guys have heard me preach this with yeah. him. Mike throws anywhere from 96 to 100. Yep. And it is, it is, it is firm and it's coming at you heavy. He like threw what, heavy. 11 fastballs in a row, I think it was. And well, they all whiffed. Well, so yeah. the thing, the thing for me is, is when his fastball is on and that velo uh, is going, it sets up every other pitch. So that's why people, and then his, his off speed stuff is really damn good. But just like with all pitchers, yeah. You have an explosive fastball and you can establish it, then they have to respect it. So yeah. they're going, Well, I gotta be ready for this thing because if I'm not, I'm gonna miss it. And then oh wait, here's that that curve, knuckle curve, here's yeah. a slider. Filth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so and, and so you're seeing that. And and for for Mike again, learning how to be in the bullpen, it's still new for him, but yeah. stuff wise, I, I again I can lie about I, can, I will lie to you, Rocco, I'll lie to people, but Honestly, I can't lie about my guys. I, I know them. I've seen these guys. And Keegan Aiken, by the way, I don't think people understood how hurt he was last year. And yeah. what you're seeing right now is a Keegan Aiken that's healthy and a guy that, that can be a very, very big part of this bullpen. And when you have a bullpen like this, guys, Brock, are you alluded to it? You can come back in every damn game. And that's what they did. Seven unanswered runs. And how about this? I don't know who wants to leave with this next after my point. Hitters five through nine. Last night, five through nine for the Orioles had six hits and six RBIs. So you're talking about a lineup that at any point can flip the switch and there's no weakness. There it was right there. Orioles come back and Jordan Westberg. Oh, nope. West I mean, yeah. When Westberg gets a hold of one, they, they, they usually don't come back and they look exactly like the one last night where. I don't want to say game on the line, but a massive moment in the game. Orioles trying to complete the comeback. And Jordan Westberg, it just feels like when you look, at, it's one of those things in baseball, sometimes the averages, the numbers will lie. And you see when Jordan Westberg comes up in the big moments, when guys are on base, when the Orioles need a spark, Jordan Westberg produces nine times out of 10. And that's, we, we, we're huge Jordan Westberg guys here. 
but he's just one of those guys that you can plug in any day, anywhere in the field, and he's going to give you 100%. He's going to give you his all, and he's going to produce. Yeah. Death taxes and Jordan Jordan Westberg should have come up in big moments. And, and Garrick Hayes, everybody. Hey, thanks, Garrick. Appreciate you. And G Garrick says, great work, guys. Keep it up. I want all of your predictions for which game will be Jackson's first home run. Yeah. I say home debut on Friday. Lock it. Should we talk about it? Is it happening yeah. in the series? I, I like that guess. You know, I will go. I'm, I'll go first because I was right about his first at bat. Yeah. You are. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go out on him and say that he probably doesn't hit his first first home run uh, until maybe sometime next week. That's what I'm going with. Okay. All right. We'll go around here. Uh, Zach, Kevin. Hmm. I'm going to go Sunday. Sun okay. I'm going to go Sunday day game. You know, that's not Ooh. watching. Oh, oh good that point. would just because of all the chaos that's happened of like they had to get the 4 a.m. flight, all yeah. that. It's so poetic. That would be the one, the first <laughs> game that Matt hasn't <laughs> been to after all that, that yeah. he finally goes. So I'll go Sunday. I like that. I do like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll go Saturday. Just the day before. No reason why. I'm, I'm just feeling confident in Saturday. So he's going. is he going to go deep off of D.L. Hall? Because that's who I believe is now Ooh, starting. Oh, that would be so Could shit. be. Could be. Mm, Rock, what you got? I'm going to go tonight. Righty on the mound for the Red Sox. I think Damn. he sends one into right, sneaks it inside Pesky's pull, has his first home run. After an 0, after an 0 for 4 night, Jackson Holiday is the type of player to come back the very next game and, and just hit one out. <laughs> And to be like, all right, he says there wasn't nerves. I do believe him. He said there were nerves at first, but once he got once he got settled in, he was ready to go. I really, truly, I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say it's gonna be tonight. By the way, Zach is giving off Joe Kelly vibes for some reason right now. That is the yeah. biggest compliment you could have ever given. Yeah, I think if we if we shave the mustache, <laughs> Joe <laughs> Kelly is my spirit yeah. animal. I, 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 can you do the face? face. Can you do the face? face? No, that's a kiss. No, that's, that's a kiss. A face. Face. It's like just a friend. Yeah, that's better. That's yeah. better. Like, <laughs> kind of kissing right now. now. You need to go more bottom lip. Like, oh my like, god. That, that, <laughs> yes, that was, there you go. <laughs> that's yeah. better. That's, that's better, better right there. Yes, yeah, I'll better. work on it. This is, of course, getting out of hand as always. But hey, if you're new to the channel, hit that like and subscribe button. And Troy, thank you for joining. We All appreciate right. that. Thank you so much. Enjoy. And we had yes. one more. Yeah, I think we had two more. Right? Laura, I think, I Laura think we, did you guys get Laura? Yes. Laura. I, mean, we, I think we missed uh, we missed Delta earlier. Delta. Oh, and Delta. Holy shirts and pants. Holy shirts. Holy and shirts pants, and baby. pants. So, uh, real quick, and I know we got a, a, our other guests to get to, but I wanted to get this poll in because maybe we can ask him too. Oh yes, you got to. What do we got? But uh, I we got 142 people came in and voted on this one which i was surprised about. let's go and uh the question is what is scarier being lost at sea or lost in a jungle and i didn't actually realize what kind of landslide this oh was going to be but go around the room first what do you guys think i ha i haven't looked at the results but the sea is terrifying yeah so i'm gonna I, go lost at no sea. chance i'm getting lost like lost at sea that would be that's nightmare fuel Ro rocco i'm scared of crabs in the ocean so oh, like right. and you're here wait, wait time out time out oh. of all things that's the one thing you're and you're, you're in maryland whenever, whenever i step around in the ocean i like pick my feet up real quick because i'm afraid if i step on a shell oh my freak you know those like little sand crabs that go in the in the no, sand fine. and then they talk about up. like stepping on like a horseshoe crab i'm terrified i don't want to oh, my so horseshoe crabs are harmless yeah but their shells aren't slice my foot oh, up right Jesus Jesus right now. You're not. Do, do you understand how many scary things are in the ocean? And that <laughs> is what the water itself. We is haven't the most explored like ninety percent of the ocean. Like, who knows? There's like a megalodon just like chilling in the ocean. <laughs> Rocco's like, but what if the crabs are out there? Yeah. <laughs> You're the a water is the most terrifying part of the sea. Like people okay. underestimate. Oh. Well, imagine yeah. it's like pitch black and oh, you're yeah. and you're in the water and there's no land in sight. And the and all you can hear maybe is like the wind, maybe it's raining, and just the waves. Yeah. And then you hear this like mm -hmm. pitter patter around you, or then you see something hop up, and you're like, "What the hell was that? Mm -hmm. It's not a crab, Rocco. I can guarantee you that they don't jump Could out be. of the water. You never know. Could be. We don't know that. Also, so, also, your last hold on for a second, Brad. Have you ever ha eaten crabs, Rock? And then, yeah. yeah. Have you ever have you ever punctured your finger eating crabs? Yeah, I mean, you get the little cuts all the time. It's okay, I mean, good. Not, okay, right then, 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 then you're see, then you're seasoned for the crabs in the water. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. absolutely not. Okay, Brad, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was <laughs> just gonna say. So the poll is with you guys. Eighty six percent say they would uh, that that uh, getting lost at sea is scarier than being lost in the jungle. But I will add 
that there's a lot of scary shit in the jungle too. Like you can't sleep at all because yeah. something's trying to eat you. Mm -hmm. It could be a plant. It could be a snake, animal, whatever. Something's trying to eat you 24 seven. So well, you're saying if it's a snake to eat you, then we're thinking about like the anaconda movies. That's in the jungle. But that thing could swallow me whole. Right. Probably. It could swallow him whole. For I, sure. wonder it, what, I wonder what, uh, okay. wonder what Tim thinks about it. Yeah, we we'll, 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 we'll ask Tim about it here in a second. <laughs> well, and I also see, we see the question here also. Thank you very much. Does, does means your place well so we can go to the Penner Irving? We'll talk about the rehab stuff after our guest. How about that? Just, But I wanted to acknowledge it. We will talk about that because also Kyle Bradish, recent news with him. And then we will look ahead. We will look ahead to the uh, Milwaukee Brewers series with the Boston <laughs> Orioles. Oh, Laura. <laughs> All right. Just the rock. <laughs> oh, the, the response. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. But before we bring on our guests, hit that like and subscribe button. It's the Ryan Ripken Show. We do this every Monday and Thursday and sometimes on Sunday. And sometimes if there's breaking news or something happens, we jump on a, a stream from wherever we are. We did that. When Jackson Holiday was getting brought up, I was in my car trying to drive back. Some people thought I was uh, the Sith in Star Wars hiding in the shadows during the stream. But regardless, we will bring you content. And again, if you're driving, don't watch us. We love to interact with you, but we have the audio format that comes out after the show. That continues to build. We preach safety on the Ryan Ripken Show. Okay. Um, now I think it's time to bring on our guest. Uh, Absolutely. Friend of the show. One of the best, again, baseball historians, writers. The best. The best ever. And, and Rocco, he loves his country western. Is yeah, that country, it? Big, he's a big country western fan. That's at least big what country. he told us last time. So, yeah, we got we got to bring him on to talk about that right off the bat. Oh, man. All right, let's bring him on, Mr. Tim <laughs> Kirchin. It's country music, not country <laughs> western. I made that mistake about 50 times. My son, who does a morning radio show in Philadelphia with country music, finally had to say, Dad, you're about 30 years outdated here. Oh. It's country music, not country western. Oh, so man. I stand Corrected. Thank you. Uh, you know what, it, Tim? My dad said it's okay to call it country western. He actually called me today when I told us, told him we were having you on, and he's like, "Listen, Tim and I, we can call it country western. Everyone else can go do their thing." So I think country western is good in, in your book, in his book. That's a well, good. Well, when I went to the Dallas Morning News in 1982 as a cub reporter, I came from Maryland, and now I'm like in the hub of country music and I had no idea what to do. Randy Galloway asked me, who's the greatest country singer ever? And I I only knew one. So I said, Kenny Rogers. I thought it was a great choice. And he <laughs> said, Timmy, Willie Nelson is the greatest country music guy ever. Now, always remember that. By the way, the first time I went to the Dallas Morning News, I'm the new guy in the place. No one knows who I am. I walk in the newsroom having for the first day and Harless Wade, who was the like one of the old time Dallas. What a perfect name for an old time Dallas based uh, sports writer looked at me and he said, you must be the, the new guy. And I said, yeah. And he said, you are the smallest goddamn Yankee I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> the first day I met, it's the first day I was in the newsroom. He called me a Yankee and the smallest goddamn Yankee he's ever seen. <laughs> welcome to Texas for good old Tim. It was great. Oh, well, well, welcome to Texas, Tim. Yeah. Man, that is hilarious. That's fantastic. Oh, my but God. I had a great time there. I learned to love living in Texas. I moved back there for another five year period. So, it was great for location. I covered the Rangers, covered there for Sports Illustrated. Loved it. Um, amazing. Well, hey, we can talk country or country western all day long, but let's talk a little bit of baseball now, Tim, uh, to, to get it going here. Obviously, uh, we actually talked with Matt Holiday earlier. It was great to hear kind of the perspective on everything that just happened. His son's debuting. Uh, he just wants to get that first hit out of the way. But we had you on here right before spring training, or right now. Of course, spring training opening day, saying he should have been on the team. He's up here now. And it's not a service manipulation time thing, if I'm not mistaken, too. It really looked like they were giving him almost an extended stay, extended spring training down there. But what do you think right now of this Baltimore Orioles team as we've gotten through these first 10 games? Are we feeling like this is almost the beginning of them possibly kind of going on a run here? Well, I think you can take the word almost out because I think the Orioles are there having won 101 and now last year. And now they have 
all three of their guys to build with the catcher, the shortstop, and now the second baseman. And I think this is a signal that this is it. This is when it really, really starts. Now, getting Corbin Burns really helped bringing up some other guys from the minor league, scoring 11 runs a game, the first nine games at Norfolk. All of these are signs that this team is going in the right direction at a really high rate of speed. But I don't think it was ever really certain until Jackson Holiday came up because he was the best player in the minor leagues last year. And he went to the minor leagues this year and they said, let's see what you can do against left-handed pitching. He didn't strike out once he tore it up and he's here. And I would have started him on opening day, but I understood and a little bit better why they did that. Right. Well, and well, whatever it is now it's, and Brandon Hyde even said recently, for those that didn't hear it, he said that lineup that played yesterday, you know, position wise, Jordan Westbrook at third, Gunner at, at short, Jackson at second, probably is going to be the the infield that's going to look like, and Ryan Mountcastle as well. And Jordan Westbrook, guys, Westy mm. is, uh, he, he's got ice in his veins. He's off to a great start. Now, I think we have a couple of news and notes we want to ask you about, Tim, because it's kind of spicy. Zach, you want to touch on that? Yeah. Uh, Tim, thanks for uh, joining us. We weren't here last time. We were kind of running around in the background getting everything uh, set up. <laughs> yeah. But a uh, little of news today with Jordan Montgomery leaving Scott Boros as his agent, and especially after the way that the offseason went where it seemed like the big Boros four took so long to sign, immediately everyone kind of jumped to the conclusion that everyone's going to leave Scott Boros. Where do you think things stand and do you think Scott still has that he's going to get these top guys and going to keep them for their entire careers? Well, let's be clear. Scott Boris is the greatest baseball agent of all time. There can't even be a close second because, mm-hmm. and he usually wins, which is why he's so good at this. And by the way, I I talked to him virtually every day for like two months when the Orioles were were thinking of drafting Ben McDonald. That's how far back wow. I go <laughs> with Scott Boris. Oh my gosh! Um, but what he's become since is just amazing. And yes, I don't think there's a way around it. He had a difficult off season as far as getting this guy signed, getting them on time and ending up with far less money than we thought. And I'm not shocked that Jordan Montgomery did that. You have every right to change your agent for whatever reason, but I don't think this is a sign that Scott Boris has lost his fastball and people are going to start leaving him here uh, all the time. I just don't see that happening. I think this was an aberrant off season for him. And I think that's probably not good news for the teams that he'll make a comeback with his next line of free agents. Yeah, I was going to say, Oriole fans, you know, knowing he has Jackson Holiday, Gunnar Henderson, and uh, Corbin Burns, you know, like you said, Scott, you, Scott Boris usually wins in the negotiation. So from that perspective, they probably aren't happy. They'd like to see someone else. But from a player perspective, it is hard not to go with the best. Yeah, I, I think... Yeah, Scott, I mean, it's his body of work, right? Mm-hmm. That's what you look at. And you go back to Ben McDonald. You were talking about decades, right? So to Tim, it's a great point with it. But obviously, with some players like Jordan Montgomery, it leaves a sour taste for him specifically because this is a guy that was looking to lock up a more longer-term deal and to kind of solidify and not be playing on a one-year contract. But, uh, Kevin, speaking of pitching injuries, I think you wanted to touch on so – speaking of pitchers, I think we have a lot of pitchers' injuries we need to touch on. Yeah, Tim, I think it's a really – controversial point throughout baseball right now about all the pitching injuries we've seen the elbow soreness obviously here in Baltimore Kyle Bradish is the topic of conversation but it seems like every other day every three days we get news of another pitcher being shut down for soreness and there's been a lot of controversy about the pitch clock and throwing hard and I'm just curious about your opinion on the whole matter and if we're going to start to see almost a shift in how some of these teams manage their pitchers moving forward. Yeah, I am really concerned where we are. Just too many good pitchers are getting hurt. And I'm sorry, I blame the industry for this. We are telling pitchers at a very young age, you need to throw as hard as you can. 
on every single pitch, max effort on every pitch. Your strikeout rate has to be really high. You have to miss bats. Otherwise, you're not going to the big leagues. Your spin rate has to be at a certain rate. Otherwise, you're not getting to the big leagues. Just follow me on this one for a second, fellas. This is where we are on this. Several years ago, a veteran major league infielder on a rehab assignment in the minor leagues was playing third base. There are two outs in an inning, 0-2 pitch to the batter who fouls out to the guy in foul territory. The pitcher comes up to him after the inning and said, why didn't you drop that ball on purpose? I had him 0-2. I need to strike people out if I'm going to get to the big leagues. If How can that be that this is where we are now? Why are there so many injuries? Because every pitcher is being told, just throw as hard as you can. And if you get hurt, we got a million guys behind you. We have to change this. And I think we're going to have to start in Little League. We're going to have to start telling 12-year-olds, you don't have to throw as hard as you can. You don't have to put that kind of torque on your arm. You don't have to throw a curveball at 12. Hit a bat, put the ball in play. And let's see if we can get some easy outs. That's where I think it has to start because there's no stopping, unfortunately, where we are right now. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's the part that we we sit here. And you're right. It's a way different day and age. And all the the pitchers that even, you know, Jim Palmer being here in Baltimore calling the games, wealth of knowledge on, on pitching, right? But pitching nowadays compared to how pitchers pitched years ago, it's different because you're not seeing the guys – the 20 game winners you're not seeing guys go uh, a ton past 200 250 innings like it's not the same game anymore but you're right the the thing is can you strike a guy out who cares if you walk the guy can you put him away where he can't put the ball in play and that's just such a different mindset and you're right it's this isn't something that is just at the big league level now tim this is kids back in uh in high school you know and i remember in the 2014 draft and, and we had jeff passing on talking about this Tyler Kolick was the second overall pick out of high school through 100. Dylan Bundy, another high pick uh, for the Orioles. It seems like at a young age for some of these guys, yes, it got the attention, but their arms broke down. And unfortunately, that is something that's occurring uh, continuously at the big league level. So um, I guess we'll have to figure out what happens. But, Rock, I think you got a question uh, as we shift back into kind of more recent baseball stuff, or at least with this season. Yeah, Tim, thanks for joining the show again. Great to see you. Great to talk with you. With the Orioles now getting Jackson Holiday up, with Kyle Bradish potentially on the horizon of coming back to the bigs, he was scheduled to make his rehab start today with Aberdeen, but there was weather issues, so he threw live VP. And then John Means, he made his third rehab start in AAA. It seems like the dominoes are beginning to fall. This team is really starting to come together. Should the rest of the American League truly be fearing this Baltimore Orioles team? And then to kind of piggyback off that, what's been the most surprising thing for you about the AL East through the first two, three weeks of the season? Well, first off, the the Red Sox are better than people think they are. Now, I'm not suggesting they do anything but finish in last place in their division, but they're better than people think. They pitched exceptionally well, although the Trevor Story injury is really going to hurt them, and I wonder how they're going to score enough runs. The other thing, we've been over this, fellas, the, the Juan Soto effect on the rest of the Yankees is palpable. You can see it. He shows them every single at bat. This is what a great at bat looks like. And that stuff rubs off. Ryan, you know this. When you Mm -hmm. played with great, great hitters, you would watch them and say, that's how it's done. So even though the Yankees haven't scored a zillion runs, they've won won five one-run games already. And part of that is that Juan Soto gives them such a great at bat every time up, whether it's a, a single to the opposite field or a walk in a key spot. This is how you get better offensively. You add a great player and then you follow his lead. So those are the things. And as for the Orioles, yes, I think everyone in the American League, if not all of baseball, is recognizing what's going on with the Orioles. And they know this team potentially could be a nightmare for years, given their talent, their youth, their energy, their athleticism. Yeah, and and you know what? Uh, the, the, the division, obviously the Orioles, a lot of young talent, but another player on the Yankees, Tim, Anthony Volpe is off to a tremendous start using the whole field. Last year it felt like he was trying to do too much, but that's another piece for the Yankees that you have Soto, you have Judge, 
And Anthony Volpe looks like a guy that's going to be yeah. the guy for them moving forward, uh, which is, if you're a Yankees fan, you got to be pretty excited about. Yeah, look, he won a gold glove last year, hit 20 homers, stole 20 bases, and it wasn't good enough for him because his <laughs> batting average was way too low. So he came back with a different swing a different ap approach, a flatter swing in order to try and instead of getting every ball up in the air, he said, let's put a few more in play. Let's get a few more hits and maybe a few, you know, fewer home runs. I love it when a young player recognizes I can do way better than this. And he has so far, he's been a great player and he will be a star in this league much sooner than later. I agree with that. And I think speaking of stars and Brad kind of with, there's some stars waiting down in Norfolk that's still trying to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and Tim, uh, again, it's, it's, it's a pleasure speaking with you. I, I, I had a question here uh, for you and I know we touched on this the last time you were on the show, but you know, the, the roster down in Norfolk is absolutely insane and, and it's a good problem to have. Sure. But there's Heston Kerstat that is just playing his ass off. Uh, Kyle Stowers, I can go down the list. Kobe Mayo, so many good players. And I just kind of struggle to try to figure out who gets replaced and, and, and how do these guys get called up? I mean, what do you do if you're Mike Elias when you have a quote unquote good problem like he has right now? Yeah, this is this is amazing. And again, this is why the rest of Major League Baseball is worried about the Orioles because they watch that Norfolk team score almost 100 runs in yeah. a nine game period. Heston Kersak can really mash. And we knew that last year, but there's no place for him at the moment. But it's only a matter of time before he'll come up. Kobe Mayo it should be in the major leagues right now and would be with 90% of the teams out there. But when you have Jordan Westberg playing at third and has two home runs already, as Brandon Hyde described him to me, when he came up last year, just another 6'2", 220 guy who has power and who can run. That's yeah. what the Orioles have. So that's why the kids at the minor leagues can look at the major league roster and say, I should be up there, but look what they have up there. It's not like they're playing people out of position or they're weak at one spot. They're so strong everywhere. So those young kids are just going to have to wait. It won't be easy, but um, they're going to have to wait. Does that give you, uh, I, I guess for, for Michael Elias, does that give him more, I guess, leverage for a trade? Let's just say if they want to, I mean, the pitching is pretty good already, but like if they want uh, to, to add to that, is there somebody that you could see that like, okay, this makes sense as far as a trade? Or do you think most of these guys are pretty non-negotiable? They're, they're here and they're just going to have to wait their, their, their turn. Well, they're going to wait their turn and I wouldn't trade any of those guys yet. Now, if they start moving mm -hmm. along this summer and things aren't going well and somebody gets hurt or Bradish doesn't come back, which I think he will, uh, then you can use your resources and go get what you need. But I wouldn't trade those guys yet. Look, I'm so old. I go back to when Don <laughs> Baylor hit like 350 and didn't get to the big leagues the next year. And Bobby Gritch was an amazingly good player and spent another year at AAA when he was, he should have been in the big leagues. Great teams are allowed the patience to wait for guys to completely be ready. But the Orioles are in a position where they can go get just about anyone they want from any team because of the resources they have in the minor leagues. And that's crazy to think about, right? And that's why I'm with you, Tim. And, and actually, we might have that coming up. We might have a chance to talk a little bit more exclusively with Mike Elias in the future. But the thing is, they were trying to wait to see what they had. That's why they waited and made a decision to trade away Joey Ortiz and D.L. Hall, who are coming to Baltimore to face the Orioles here this weekend. But they got, in the process, one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. Speaking of another pitcher, well, we're going to wrap up here, Tim. But speaking of the best pitcher in baseball right now, arguably, you're saying Corbin Burns, he's been tremendous. But a person that hasn't maybe gotten the love for his start, and because he's starting tonight, uh, against the Boston Red Sox is Grayson Rodriguez. And Grayson Rodriguez has looked every bit of the ace he was supposed to be coming up, and he's looking like the Grayson Rodriguez that closed out last season. I think, he, Tim, he's going to be an all-star this year. I mean, is it crazy? Am I, am I nuts to say that Grayson Rodriguez could very well find himself and now climbing up the Cy Young ranks for this 2024 season? I think he can be an all-star this year also. His stuff is elite, as we all know. His character and makeup is 
elite, which is part of it. And I, I think it's really healthy once in a while when a guy comes up and struggles immediately and then recognizes, hey, I failed for the first time in my whole life and I failed in the big leagues. That is not an easy thing to do. But any young player who can fail for the first time on the big league level and then find a way to get through that, that's a really impressive kid. I've seen a lot of kids fail on the big league level and never get it back. But the really good ones figure it out. And that's what Grayson Rodriguez did the second half of last year and has taken it into this year. It is a really, really impressive point. He is. He's balling out and hopefully he continues to roll. And I think Corbin Burns challenging him and kind of poking at him. Hey, I did this. Try to one up me. It's been a great little, you know, competition, so to speak, in Baltimore. Before we get out of here, I got to ask you now, now that you are, I guess, three episodes in to your uh, podcast with your son, Jeff, and that is I'm, do, I'm making sure I'm hitting all the right things. It's it's this is a great game or what? And actually, I texted you about this because you guys just talked about these stories with Ichiro. And Ichiro is so technical about everything. I think you, if I heard that correctly, Eduardo Perez also took one of his bats was one of the stories in there. And Ichiro didn't like that too much. Um but you, I mean, talk just quickly talk to us about how it's all going. And, and the stories to me are, are endless that you have. Well, I've collected stories for the last 45 years. We're three <laughs> podcasts in and I have plenty more to go. So um, I love working with my son, as you can imagine. Yep. It's a father son thing. It's really, really cool. But the best part, as I may have told you, my son is a magician when it comes to the technology that it takes because I can't figure out anything out. I can barely use my cell phone as a phone. So when I'm trapped at home without my son sitting next to me and we're doing, you know, intricate technology, I am totally dead. So when we tape, I get in my car in Maryland and I drive to Philadelphia. We can tape in his basement because the comfort that I have that I'm sitting right next to my son is really important. It's a joyful uh, playful. It's a uh, show. It's a Valentine for baseball fans. We're not breaking any news here. We're not trashing people. We're just trying to make to appeal to people who love the game as much as I do. And I I love working with my son. This has been, frankly, the highlight of my entire career. That's awesome. That That's amazing. And also we just put in for those that are watching this live, it's in the chat right there. Tim's podcast name. So you guys don't forget it. And that's what I love. People love the stories, Tim. And then also the fact that you can tell stories and have laughs with your son along the ways like that. That's the thing for me with, and my dad, when we've done certain things, you just can't replicate that. Okay. I think final thing rock. And then we're getting Tim out of here. Yeah. Two very, very quick things before you get you out of here, Tim. Uh, first question I want to ask you is any more grocery store run-ins with the Baltimore names as, as of late or is that, <laughs> is that okay. <laughs> No, I, I haven't done anything lately with, with Scott Van Pelt. Of course, he's at the Masters this week. Mm -hmm. I did recently, I was standing in line at a sandwich shop oh, and the lady behind the counter says to the guy who ordered a roast beef sandwich, he said, what kind of, the lady said, what kind of cheese would you like and she he said um he he turned around and looked at me didn't even say hello and said provolone so <laughs> now, i'm standing behind a guy at a sandwich shop and he's ordering a cheese because he knows i'm gonna laugh standing right behind him <laughs> this is how pitiful this has become for me provolone provolone <laughs> And, and Tim, quickly, the last thing I got for you is you said when you were in Dallas, you were called a goddamn Yankee, correct? Yes. Smallest goddamn Yankee ever, okay. right? <laughs> okay. So I want I want to read off the difference because when I was in the South, I was called a damn Yankee. But there there is a difference, and I don't know if you know it. It's the Yankee comes to the South to visit and quickly leaves. The damn Yankee comes for a visit and never leaves. The goddamn Yankee comes for a visit never leaves and then goes on and on about how much nicer it was back home. So you must have done something to take these people off down in the South that they called you the goddamn Yankee because they went zero to a hundred. 
<laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> sure you did. Sure I, you I did. I showed Tim. up at five foot four, looking like I was twelve years old, and I was covering the Rangers. There was eight there, like who is this guy? And I, he, with a seven and a half shoe, he's covering a major league team. How is that possible? That's the only thing I did wrong. I showed up looking like me. <laughs> wow. Well, your se- your secret's safe with us, Tim. We know you're the nicest guy, but maybe, maybe deep down, something else happened. But gosh, you you just got stories for days, and you don't even know it, Tim. This is why this is why we love having you on. But uh, we appreciate you as always. Uh, thanks for taking the time. I'm. Don't worry, I will bother you again soon, and we'll talk a lot more of the rest of this baseball season. All right, fellas. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon. Tim Crouchin, everybody. Hey, thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Oh, man. That's great. He, he's, he's, I love he's that guy. Amazing. Tim's the best. So he's good. like, like, literally how you imagine. He, you know, there's some people that, like, you see him on TV, you're like, oh, he's probably a different guy. He's, he's just the same guy, and I love it. I just yep. love the fact of being like, I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All I did was show up looking like me. <laughs> hey, and you know what? Great, quite great, great reporting right there, Rock. That's Thanks, beautiful. Rip. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I was able to ask one to Tim. I, I really did ah. appreciate you letting me do that. Thank you. Hey, man. you got some FaceTime though with uh, Matt Holiday. It's probably not the <laughs> way. <you'd... laughs> I think Matt has figured out though now that uh, he's in on the inside jokes a little bit. He just kind of rolled it when we pulled your face up and threw it right off. <laughs> he just I saw him smile. <laughs> oh yeah, and he was like, oh yeah, I already know who everybody is. That was awesome. Also, yeah. during while uh, Tim was on Amanda, oh, uh, hey. thank you for the thanks, Amanda. Remember, he's the Holy Shirts and Pants member. Oh, oh. all right, that's oh. double clap. Well, wait, well, well, hold on. I should I should have done this earlier. Oh. oh, hey now, that might be a thing. So stay Ooh. tuned to you see. You have if that's to do it like fifteen times. Also, you the saying, channel. What okay. I was saying, no, can we ahead. add you saying on the soundboard, "Holy shirts and pants"? Any every oh, time yeah. someone joins, it might get really <laughs> annoying. But I think that would be just something we need to do, especially when someone joins. You just holy shirts and pants, holy shirts yeah. and pants, holy shirts and pants, just down the line. I think it'll be perfect. Oh, it'd be that, and I'm also going to get the doctor. I'm going to get some Austin Powers thrown on, in on there as well, like oh, behave. Can I ask you a question and be honest? Ah, uh, God, there's so many. But hey, if you're new to the channel, hit that like and subscribe button. Ron Ripken channel. We do this every Monday and Thursday and Sunday and some other days when we feel like it. But those <laughs> are the ones that we will put out for on the uh, the audio. When it's the breaking news ones, when we're just kind of at home and it's a scramble drill, we won't put those out on the audio, but it will always be on this channel for YouTube. We're trying to grow the channel in a lot of different ways, and and so far I think we're off to a great start, and it's because of our community. So make sure you're hitting that like and subscribe button if you're on YouTube, and if you're on X, hit that follow button. You can see Rocco right there at at Rocco to Sangro. You got at Own the Chaos for Brad, at Chaos Striker 34 for Kevin, at Zach Bollinger uh, 18 for Zach. And uh, also Discord, we got a Discord, and we got a Discord, we got a Discord. Um, so Garrick again, hey, well, we because now that we wrapped up with the pitching injuries, we can come back to it, but okay, okay, one more for y'all. I've been getting Zach's lines predictions the past couple of games. I want to hear your predictions for Grayson to start tonight. Okay, good time. Who, well, we already know yours, Zach, right? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go a little, little risky. I think after the past. Two, what, two or three uh, starts? Just impressive starts by everyone. Think, keep the ball rolling. Going seven innings, mm. two earned runs, punches out 10. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, I like that. I actually like that a lot, Zach. Rock, you. Or Rock, you want to go? And then Kevin? I, I swear it's not me piggybacking off of what Zach said, but my prediction was going to be six. He's going to go six strong, two earned. Nine strikeouts is what my prediction. I feel like you're piggybacking off me right now. <laughs> I'm not piggybacking off you, Joe Kelly. I, that is such a compliment to me. I love that. I yeah, you're I need actually, a mariachi suit. Okay. Kevin, oh what God. you got? I'm going to go six as well. I think that's just like been the magic number for some of these starts. So I'm going to go six. I'm going to go – I'll go bold. I'll go one hit ball for, for Grayson with eight strikeouts. Ooh, sugar. Brad. Uh, sorry, I was putting up the Discord. You're was- good. I'll give you a second here. Grayson Rodriguez line prediction. I'll go. I think Gre- Grayson's gonna go six as well. I think Grayson gives up one earned run, struck set, strikes out eight, and gives up four hits. How about we all know that? Brad's prediction is gonna be the right one because it always is. 
It's like <laughs> Jackson Holiday, right? Let's go with Grayson. So whatever Brad says, I, I feel like someone should lock it in. Uh, if he's only given up one run, I'm I'm gonna guess that he's gonna go seven. So I'm gonna go on Grayson seven. Uh, ten Ks. We're gonna go double digits. And uh, and yeah, what was? That's it, right? And that's that. How many, that, how many, how many Aaron Brad? Oh, uh, two and runs. I like it. I like it. Too. Like it. That'd be a great outing. Hey, why don't we talk quickly about the other pitching notification or the uh, pitching injuries right now? We talked about John Means had his last re or his rehab start um, with Norfolk. So actually, why we get all that together? Because also after that, we're gonna have Jason Benowitz come on and join us. But while he's joining uh, the show, we're I'm gonna get ready. Time. Yeah, again, because I saw. Uh, Delta Nine, Brian, love the Discord server. We appreciate you. And you, I think you even asked, um, you know, yes, I am doing the 105.7 pregame show right before the game. And yes, it's close enough where we are to get where I need to go. So I will be on the Odyssey app or 105.7 at 6 p.m. And for the moment, though, Zach, give people the Joe Kelly and talk about the Kyle Bradish and John Means situation. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a channel member emoji right there. Oh, for one. sure. Uh, yeah. So John Means and Kyle Bradish. Uh, John Means pitched today, and actually, let me uh pull up his stats real fast. Three, three, uh, I, all right, go ahead. I was just gonna just round up right now for you. Three innings, two hits, two earned. Uh, I think he had two walks and then three strikeouts mm -hmm. as well, and he threw sixty-three pitches. I want to say. Yeah. So I think the biggest thing I take away from when I look at his stats right now is the pitches. So they are going to try to work him up and you would, I would think we see him around the 80 pitch mark before he comes up to Baltimore. I think they want to give him, you know, really make sure that he is, you know, moved along. And I think the other thing that people don't necessarily realize is it wasn't necessarily an injury that John means is coming back from it was something that he was dealing with last year going into the postseason. There was just some inflammation and he wasn't comfortable. They had to just have him. They pretty much had him rest. They had him rest for an extra month or so. And he came to spring training about a month behind the schedule that they like to have him on going into a season. So it's not necessarily that he's dealing with something or that you have to look at and go, okay, how's the arm feeling? That kind of thing. You know, that there's some injury they're going to be looking after. This is 100% just him trying to, this is his spring training. This is mm -hmm. the best way to put it. This is his spring training. So they're going to go out there. So the pitches are what you like to look at. 63, I would like to see him get up to 80 probably next time. I say probably gets one more start in Norfolk. Then we'll probably see him in the big leagues. Kyle Bradish, like you said, Rocco, he uh, was supposed to start today for mm -hmm. Aberdeen in his rehab assignment. Whether if you're around here in Baltimore, you know it is not the greatest right now. So the Orioles said, why would we put Kyle Bradish out there in a wet game? So they're having him pitch live BP today just to get keep the arm moving. And that is something that I don't think people realize how big that is. You know, that is a massive step for Kyle Bradish to be able to start getting into games, start really starting his, his process back to the majors. Now, obviously him with the UCL, they are going to be as careful as possible with Kyle Bradish. I don't think this is something where Kyle Bradish goes and he pitches three times in the minors and then we see him. I think he's going to be like means. He's going to start out. They're going to have him throw 20 pitches in a game. Then they'll have him throw 30 and so on. I could see him getting five, six, seven starts in the uh, his rehab assignment. Oh. And then hopefully if all goes well, he comes back. What you got, right? I was going to say he might, they might work him up begin him in Aberdeen and and potentially bring him up. They definitely to will. Bowie, Norfolk. And that yeah, that's like what they'll they'll elevate him. But I would assume probably I mean, I'm not I'm not the person to ask about this, but maybe two starts in Aberdeen, like you said, work him up. If all goes well there, maybe you see him advance or not pr get promoted, but they put him with Bowie. And then after one or two starts there, they bring him up to Norfolk and see if he can like really get up to where John means is working at right now with that 60 to potentially 80 pitch count mm -hmm. because, but this is progress, man. The fact that he was even going to throw a game and yeah. begin his rehab assignment, Michael Elias said it best. He didn't, it's, it's not like he kept Birdland in the dark about this one either. Mm -hmm. He said the expectation and the hope, obviously hopes can go either way. Sometimes was to have both of these guys back early in the first half of the season 
And it really truly seems like both guys, Means and Bradish, are on that path to get back with the Birds and pitch with them in the early first half of the season. But it's a wait and see kind of thing, like you said, Zach, with the UCL sprain, PRP injection. You, you never truly know how that's going to go until you get a guy out on the mound throwing in a live game situation for the first time. But Bradish definitely on the right track. Uh, well, I think also they, the Orioles have the depth to not rush these guys back, which I think is mm -hmm. the most important part yes. where, you know, some teams, they just don't have the right depth. And it's like, well, we could bring this guy back right now and we have to do it because we have no one else. The Orioles aren't in that position where whether you want to talk about Tyler Wells, talk about Cole Irving, talk about these pitchers going into the year. And we talked about this on this show. They're, they're seven deep when you come. And even if you want to throw Povich in the conversation or McDermott in the conversation, you want to keep going down the list. Like, obviously, you want Bradish back in the rotation yeah. as soon as possible, but not at the expense of risking a more serious injury or even a setback. So I think the Orioles are taking the right approach with this where, yeah, we want to see Means back. We want to see Bradish back. Like, that's the I think that's the consensus among the fan base because they're great pitchers when they're mm -hmm. on but they have enough to withstand that and not necessarily sacrifice their place in the standings or just absolutely sacrifice loss after loss after loss mm -hmm. because they still have good good pitchers available. And I think, are, are we good to go on the breakdown? We are good to go. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, I can. Yes, I hey, can. now I'm looking at this camera now. How are we doing? How are we feeling? You guys can react. Can you can hear okay? off the screen. Oh, yeah. that's okay. You can keep rocking on the screen. Well, hey, we try to do this because we want to, well, we don't need this player location check. Hey, now. Check, oh check, God. check, check. All my information out there. Just kidding. Uh, but we do this because we want to preview the Brewers who are coming to town tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Actually, some former Orioles are coming into town. Joey Ortiz, D.L. Hall. As you can see on the screen, though, if you're not aware of these players, you have Jackson Holiday, Corbin Burns, Christian Yelich, and Jackson Chirillo of the Milwaukee Brewers, who is the number two overall prospect behind Jackson Holiday. So the reason we're bringing this up the Brewers are actually, it just feels like, Zach, didn't we talk about this earlier, that they just continue to play good baseball? Yeah, all they do is they will silently get, last year, quietest 90-win uh, team of the in the league, without a doubt. Yeah, and even though, and even though it's been a tough kind of offseason for them, so to speak, you lose your ace, they're still a very good team. And this is a big reason it's Christian Yelich. And yes, Christian Yelich was a MVP years ago candidate and all that, but... Uh, guys, I think we're starting to see the Kristen Yelich come back into form. We saw it at the end of last year. This is his 2023 hit chart to even give a little bit more context. He likes spreading the ball around. But the thing that's scary for him is that his home runs are coming back, and he's already got five jacks on the year. And what makes Christian Yelich one of the best players in baseball, and it looks like he's back to that form, is his ability to drive the baseball anywhere at any time and really any location so let's talk about that for a quick second here this is lefty on left okay so this could be a, this could be criminal what christian yelich does this is a high heater about 96 miles an hour 95 and yelich tall guy stays on it and doesn't do too much all he does is get his bat to the ball and he's going to hit this out to left on a really tough pitch i mean that ball is way up there but not up there enough for Christian Yelich. Stays on it. Whammy. Out of the park. Against the Reds. He's feeling good. And we're going to do the trend here. Christian Yelich is going to hit this ball to the absolute moon. He might actually cause the eclipse with this home run here. It's going to be a slider cutter inside. Whammy. I don't even know where this lands. There it is. It's trying to come down. But that ball is way up there. And he just looks like that MVP once again. And, and as we're just going to roll it right through, pitch right down the middle, that's what we call, well, I'll save that language for a different time for rip after dark, but pitch right down the middle, 96, doesn't do too much, homer right up the middle. Now here's Jackson, okay? The other Jackson for the Milwaukee Brewers. And you can say, hey, look, he's hitting ninth, he's young, he's making his debut. He's had a lot of success so far this year. Going into when we're recording this, he was hitting 282, had a couple home runs. Here's one of them, a hanging slider that is absolutely crushed to left. And I mean, it's up there. Second deck, souvenir for those fans. Look how happy they are. Great moment for him. But the thing that Jackson does well here, he's going to stay back and drive the ball the other way with authority. And this is why he was so touted as well. Doesn't try to do, overdo anything and lets his skill set be on full display. And that's why he can be so dangerous. But... 
Jackson's had 39 at-bats. He struck out 13 times. So 33% of the time, he is going down, and he will chase. He's a young player, and just like the the concerns with Jackson Holiday of striking out the strikeout percentage in spring training or if you're standing in the minors, he's going to chase. And you're going to see here, slider away, way out of the zone, see ya. Another opportunity here, guess what, slider away, see ya. And it's a tough pitch. Those are good pitches, but you're also going to see he's going to chase up. So in this case, oh, camera went out. There we go. Oh. Don't we love this? We'll bring it back to Zach here for a second. <laughs> Rocky. Hey now. How's it going, everyone? So uh, Kyle Bradish and John Means. Uh, I, I did want to. Nope. There was a question. Uh, are uh, we back? No, we're not back yet. What's the oh, question? All right. Uh, it's about the velocity. Is there any concern about the velocity of these guys coming back? I mean, definitely. There's always going to be a concern of velocity when you have guys that are coming back, obviously. John Means being an older. We're back. Yeah, screw you guys. Here we go. We're back to it. Yeah, good couple of good kids. And again, we're talking about those uh, subscriptions. Uh, if you pay for the su subscriptions, we might get a new wire to this camera, which would be fantastic as well. Uh, but the last point, last point I was trying to make, he chases pitches. You're going to chase a pitch up here from Luis Severino, out of the zone, way out of the zone, fastball high. And again, young players, you tend to chase a little bit more. But also, I wanted to show in this, by the way, we got to give some love to some former Orioles. Joey Ortiz, who's filling in, getting comfortable at the big league level. All love for Joey, getting the opportunity. He's going to smoke a ball to right, drive in a run, have a double. Again, really great player. He's a tremendous defensive player. That's where a lot of people give him the most credit, but the guy can swing the bat. And then D.L. Hall. And it, actually, that graphic was on Brewers.com here. If I can go back. Here we go. Uh, this is a quote from Pat Murphy on D.L. Hall. Hall's got a chance to be a number one just because he get he or sorry just because he's got overpowering stuff. The kid's electric. They're right. D.L. is electric, but it's a new role for D.L. He's going from reliever back to starter. And if we're looking at his first two outings, he's slated to pitch on Saturday against the Baltimore Orioles. Now, and if you're looking at it so far, four innings and five and a third, he's given up some hits. Only given up three and two earned runs, respectively. But his Ks aren't necessarily there right now. If I can get out of the way, five Ks, one K. I guess that was better in the last one. The walks, two, a, a middle of the road. But I think the most interesting thing with me with DL is look at these numbers. His four seam fastball, granted being a reliever, 95, 96 in 2023 and 2022. That fastball below is significantly down for DL Hall right now at 92.4. So you wonder if it's being a starter, is that kind of what's causing DL, if I can move over this way a little bit, is that causing him to kind of ramp up and not try to uh, you know, blow it out every time that you're throwing? You want to make sure that you have enough left in the tank? So, But I am curious because his fastball has always been high. It's always been elite, and that really sets up his other pitches. So it'll be fun to watch with DL. It's going to be a bittersweet moment, but I'll tell you what, it's something about playing your former team, I hope, for Orioles fans, he doesn't light it up, but I hope personally he has a great game. And you know another guy that's having a revenge game, fellas? Corbin Burns. Corbin Burns is going to be facing the Brewers, it looks like, on Sunday. And my guess, if you're a betting man on that, he is going to have a spectacular, spectacular game. So that's it. We'll be right back to Kevin's corner for a second or while we're talking. Um, while we're talking, actually, you can bring it back to me. While we're talking, I think we're waiting on our – are we waiting on Jason? Yeah, he's about to pull in. Okay. So while we're waiting on Jason, actually, can, can we announce our, our new uh, sponsor, by the way? I'm looking yeah. over. Yeah. You guys haven't it. really heard all this yet. <laughs> guys, I'm ready. I, I'd love to give all – I'll just close this out. We don't need this in the background. Hey, now, uh, maybe we do. No, we don't. Um, guys, we have a, uh, a betting sponsor, Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races. Woo! Are a proud sponsor. Get those parlays in. Boom, baby. Justice Hill, three touchdowns. Boom, baby. So, special. Boom. So they're conveniently located about an hour, hour and a half outside of Baltimore, D.C. We have so much more that we're going to share with them, and this has been something that's in the works, and we have a lot more in the works for them. So we want you to keep you posted, but we want to officially announce them. They have a lot of promotions, and just like we do stuff with Adam's Jeep, 
I'm going to have a lot of opportunities that can be a lot of fun to do with them as well. So stay tuned on that. I wanted to share that. Also, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. And uh, guys, I think, I think, is Jason in here? Yeah, Jason's in here. Oh, get him on screen? baby. Yeah, bring him on screen for us. Jason. Hi, boys. How's it going? Rocco, you better get on screen with Jason. Oh, my God. Oh, He's giving man. a thumbs down. Oh, my this kid. God. Oh, man. <laughs> See, I was, I was, I was going to say, I know Tim talked about um, – yeah, how how fun it is to do a podcast with his son, and I feel the same way about Rocco. So it's it's just great to be here. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. God. Yeah. So for those who don't know, as we put on Twitter last night, Jason is giving away two tickets to the Orioles versus Brewers tomorrow. Jackson Holiday's home debut going to be electric yeah. yard is going to be packed be there or be square unless you're rocco please don't be there um yeah rocco. i really hope not rocco laugh it's a joke man he is so... <laughs> he's smiling he he understands oh, oh, I'm Sorry. Good one. this is why that, this is that, why I, rocco. Know. That, I know now the rule now the rule is he has to answer it on stream Oh, yeah, we'll have him enter. Yeah, we're getting ripped set up real fast. Jason, how are you doing today? Good, man. You know, I, after the game last night, um, I, I don't think you guys have talked about it yet, but um, lineup is a mirror image. It's a carbon yep. copy. Um, so that, well, that makes me fired up. Um, of course, everyone knows I'm a Cowser guy, so last night was massive. Um, just, just let him go out there and do his thing. That, that's all he needs to do. Damn right. Can you hear me, Jason? Yes, sir. Beautiful. Beautiful. And you're right. It was a great game. And, and Brandon Hyde did touch on it, guys, that this lineup is the one we're going to see. And we talked about Jackson Holiday. If he's going to be up, you need to play him. Let him get out there. Let him figure it out. When you see a guy like Jordan Westbrook, this is why we did the breakdowns early on. This is why I keep preaching. And, and Jason, I'm tired of telling people how good uh, Jordan Westbrook is. The dude is electric. But the biggest thing, Jason, and right here, Robot Wrestler, weirdly enough, I had a dream that I was at Camden Yards a few nights ago, and Jason was in that dream. Make of that what you will. <laughs> because of the situation that you have, Jason, it's a really – what I love is that you love the community. You might even more love it more than us, and that's 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 a far-fetched claim because we love our community, but you really care about uh, the people and the passion for not only the team but the city of Baltimore. Shout out to Rick. Because he's not the only one. Every time Hauser <laughs> breathes, I get tweets. So I love it. Well, that's a lot. That's a lot of tweets and breath and breaths. Yeah. yeah. Last actually, last night when he was doing his breathing and his yoga, I got plenty of tweets. So yeah, actually, that was a good. That was a fantastic clip. But yeah. Hauser last night, love seeing him back in three straight starts for Colton Hauser. That gets me fired up. Mm -hmm. Well, and and yeah. again, it's, it's being patient. Being Deserved. being patient for Hauser is a big thing. And, and I even, I think I, I told people this, the hardest thing is to go out there and try to get in a rhythm when you're not playing every day. But I think he learned a lot of valuable lessons last year because he had to do that. And that was tough, especially when you're in the middle of a divisional race and everything's going on and you're trying to get your feet wet in the big leagues. But now it seems like he's comfortable. He's comfortable with the group and he is just locked in. And maybe the birds tonight, Jason, can get a nice sweep before welcoming in D.L. Hall, Joey Ortiz, and the Milwaukee Brew Crew uh, starting on Friday night. Yeah, no, I, I'm a big – I've said this for, for years now. I'm with you. I'm a big believer in Grayson, so I think he just he just shoves tonight. Let's do it. Shoves tonight. Let's do it. And, and by the way, um, people stayed up late because they wanted to – you guys kept going back and forth. I thought I get cryptic with my tweets <laughs> at times, but you and Zach just kept going back and forth on – on all of that, well done. And then Zach hit me with a barrage in Rocco of, of, um, of memes. I don't know if you saw yeah, the I meme. Had to catch more. up on all that. I didn't really I understand did. how that. Who started that? Well, oh I made God. Jordan Iceberg because once I thought of it, I couldn't stop thinking about Jordan Iceberg. And then Rocco Which, said, "Nothing, nothing wrong with that." Yeah, and so Rocco then said, "Delete this." So then I put his face on a pile of sand and said, "Rocco, does sand grow?" And then he put my face on a baseball and said, Zach, baseballinger. 
And then it just kept on. Then everyone just started photoshopping Rip's face on a lot of different things. And that's kind of well, luckily how for it me, ended. there's literally a list I'm, courtesy of Stackhouse yep. with all my names on it. So you could have done you could have made me an organic produce farmer. You could have made me an oyster shucker. There are a lot of yeah. options. So uh, you're giving so you're saying that you're you want to be a, a oyster, Kevin the oyster yeah, shucker. I kind of felt left I felt left out a little bit. I mean Ryan was like a bodybuilder like i saw that yeah, but that's honestly but then i put you in i was like i could have been with the cats oh. since i'm the cat herder of the oh. group. yeah <laughs> that is so true <laughs> we can uh we can for sure we can for sure uh continue on with that trend but again kevin i didn't do this by the way i didn't do and by the way shout out c money Bowser ted williams 2.0 i love it oh good stuff and hmm R no, Rocco I get was clap. giving the. Yeah, how's it feel to clap, Jason? Feels great. I mean, Rocco's not doing it, so someone has to. He's raising yeah, the Rocco's roof raising behind the, the scenes. Rocco, right now. Rocco actually has the clap. <laughs> Brad. <laughs> Here we are having he's a great show. The, he's still raising the roof <laughs> after Brad <laughs> said that. <laughs> I don't think Rocco knew at all what just happened here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Holy shirts and pants. So um, the giveaway. The giveaway. The giveaway, Jason. Yeah. I think it's the yep. moment. It's gonna be it's gonna be electric, jam-packed, but again, um amazing. Let's talk about it. And maybe we finally you can reveal what's happening and who is going mm -hmm. to Jackson Holiday's opening night in Baltimore. It's me. Yeah. No, wow! Well, someone take him off screen, please. I got take you. him off screen. I, I don't want to see him. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, drum. Dr do we get a drum roll? Do we go. drum roll? Like drums? I think no, is there a drum thing on there? No, wait, oh, there might be. Is there? Oh, uh, there's a trombone. <laughs> no, <Nope>. no. <laughs> that would that be so anti <laughs> just, like, just spam uh, one of yeah. the buttons. Just spam <laughs> one. Of yeah, okay, there we go. There, there we go. go. <laughs> there's there's that a word, yeah. So, uh, random pick, random draw. I just go to the website, plug in the info, have nothing to do with it. And the winner is at ClaudeNud underscore, and the only name that's on there is Eric. So there you go. And I'm about to tweet it out. So yeah. Okay, right. so, yeah. Yeah. so make sure to go check it out if that's you on Jason's Way Twitter. Way to go, Eric. Congrats. That's huge. There you uh, go. I, we will uh, see just, you just posted at it. the yard. Just posted oh. it, so it's it's out there to see. Yep. Boom, baby, boom. We got to get the Doctor Evil on the uh, on the thing. Oh, yeah. The air horn. Uh, the other. I can't figure this out. Oh, that's nope. our music. Nope, not yet. Yeah. Hey. There you go. Yeah. Oh, oh. Eric, tu Eric's Eric. tuning in. He got it. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. There we go. Let's go. All right. Let's go, Eric. That gets me fired up. And this is why <laughs> this is that. why you enter these contests because Jason yeah. is a dog, but also one of the best out there for for wanting to help the community. And this is why you watch the Ryan Ripken show because you never know if you're going to be picked. And in this case, Eric, we'll see you at Camden Yards. And if you're got you don't got plans before, then come down to Pickles. I will be there doing the pregame show, uh, getting or I guess doing my part to try to. Uh, get the crowd going well i gotta work but yes come on down it should be a lot of fun <laughs> jason you plan on being down i'm assuming have to be i'll be there as long as rocco's not so oh, whoa. Oh, oh that's how we jesus yeah rocco looks like you're not going then bud Ooh. oh he dropped you with a bud <laughs> he did look he I, I i will before before we i gotta i gotta say one nice thing about rocco um yes. because I, I feel like i have to um I, this is this is a recurring bit now, but I have to say one nice thing. Um, it's a, I read the article on your brother, and now I realize um, why everyone in your family is so much better than you. Oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> that was going so well. But yes, you're right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He's, and, he's and a that great was a, kid. Was, that was the thing we were talking about. That was a great story. Also, it's amazing. I, I I don't want so Rocco. I, oh, his, his his nickname is Twitch. Yeah, yeah, and that's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, yeah. dude, he he definitely leans that, into the threats. Like I pissed he, my pants he, laughing when I found out his nickname was Twitch. That's dude, awesome. It was it was so great. Like at WrestleMania, 
<laughs> he hated when the uh, when the fireworks were going off because it's like overstimulation. So he yeah. has earplugs. He's covering his ears. I'm asking him if the next wrestler has pyro, and he's like, "Yeah, they have pyro. Like they're good to go." So it was like it was it was great, man. He's funny. That is so funny. Oh gosh, we got we got such a good group. But Jason, maybe also, hey, we got to give some applause here. Don, All right, Don. Hey, Don. He says, guys, I've been listening on Bluetooth. A quick traffic update. 95 northbound sucks. I can relate to that. Great show. Hey, uh, you know, his wife is a member now. Uh, she she yeah. is Victoria. Shout out Victoria and Don C. But Don is not. Yeah. Don, but you know what? Don, well, Don's he's, like. He's driving, though. He's driving. Yeah, he just, well, well, driving. Technically yeah. just paid for yeah, one. He just paid, essentially. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Like, you know, his wife's got his one up them. Oh, <laughs> competition. Hey, yeah. Hey, guys. Competition. Well, we're not going completely off topic with with this because oh, it's boy. on IPOs. It's passengers okay. tweeted. The Royals are now nine and four and have the third best record in the American League behind the Yankees and Guardians. Kansas City has now won seven straight, sweeping the White Sox and Astros. Royal starters have a one nine six ERA and have averaged the most innings per start in MLB. And then we look at the Orioles bats that series. It all makes sense now. It wasn't Damn. Orioles. The Orioles bats were asleep. But the Royals are just that good right now at this point in the season. So wait, Rocco, that doesn't make sense though. I was told that the Orioles had the easiest start to a year of all time. And, and if they don't take advantage of this now, it was over. They're screwed. Yeah. They're yep. screwed. Yep. Jason, don't you agree? I think the team, you know what? Why don't we just move the team out of Baltimore at this point? Take them to Nashville. I heard they were screwed two weeks ago. So yeah. Yeah. After after the first game. Even yeah. though, even yeah. though Mike it was Trout a went yard in the first inning and the season was Oh, and Burn, Burns Burns was a bomb after that. Yeah, Bobby Witt is two out today. Bobby Witt, Bobby Witt Jr. is low key. Bombs. He's gonna be a he's gonna be a low key. Well, see that that just board. that just proves the Orioles drafted the wrong guy. So <laughs> 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 what is I love that spin hey, though. Yeah. Peer, peer pressure works. Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. That's that you're the that man. was your plan all along, wasn't it, Brad? To get him in there. He's in the holy shirt spit and pants bar. Oh, oh, Don C, you dog. Don, 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 Don C should Naughty. be in a tier of his own, honestly. That guy's a legend. Love it. Love it. Uh, guys, there's so many good things. But, Jason, you better try to come find me tomorrow then if you're going to be down there. And we are going to try to have Jason on. If you guys know him on X, it's at, I'm just trying to remember the hand. You get your handle exactly. Is it at Jay Benowitz? Yeah, it, Jay Benowitz1831. Yep. Okay, that was where I was going to get the numbers mm -hmm. thrown off there. At Jay Benowitz, yeah. 1831, right? Was that, okay. the, year you, yeah. was that yeah. the year you were mm -hmm. born? 1831? No. Oh, I, so I, I was – now I'll give you the story, actually. My birthday is August 31st, and my okay. favorite number growing up was 10, so I just smashed them all together. Boom, baby. All right. All right. I was Boom, wrong. baby. Right. Yeah. Well, we know you were yeah. wrong. But uh, we're going to have yeah, Jason on stupid. for – <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have jason on a lot throughout this season to continue to bring the good vibes continue to talk about orioles baseball uh and he's really a the, the baltimore battery by the way has been something if yeah. you guys aren't following on x they do a tremendous job you guys are doing a the, the, you guys are doing the people's work you know a lot there's a lot of great communities out there for baltimore to root on the Orioles, but the Baltimore Battery, big, big friends of the program, and, and we are obviously mm -hmm. value your guys' friendship. So thank you for all you do. And, and again, make sure mm -hmm. for our, the two winners, you make sure you see it and get those tickets. Uh, tomorrow should be a special night. Um, oh, yeah. Lettuce. And, yep. Lettuce is now a member of the Holy Church. Oh, oh, Lettuce. All right. Dog. And for those that are wondering what is going on, we introduce channel members during this stream. So if you're on your computer, you can hit the join button right next to the subscribe button and uh, get exclusive emotes, get a little badge that will go up over time as you keep being subscribed to it. And it's another way to support the show, support what we do over here. So it's cool. Kevin just given the information. That's what he's here for. We need oh, it so we can also man. get a, a extension to the camera that, that, that doesn't go out while Ryan does the breakdown. Yeah. Uh, oh, put a lot of these things. Uh, again, all, all this can I say something yes. about Jason? Nice about Jason oh, no. before we go. No, Jason, no. I hope that Colton thing. Kowser, I hope that Colton Kowser hits his first home run of the season Friday night at Camden Yards while you're in attendance, but I hope it's while you're in the restroom. So wow. Okay. That, that, was, that, that, that was that was so mean. It was so bad. It was it was like <laughs> you were, you were so bad. <laughs> I knew exactly where you were going with that the second that yeah. you started. I no, I really I really do hope he hits one for you though, man. It'd be awesome. 
Oh, you can't say no forever. No, I know. Yeah, it's, he, listen, this is this he, is the brother's relationship. Yeah, but you know what? Rocco's a sour pouch kid. First, he's a ray first of sour. No, Rocco was a ray of sunshine. First time he ever yeah. came on Locked On Ravens, there was a comment. Rocco remembers it where he was called a ray of sunshine, and uh, he has worked very hard to. I think you've worked hard, Rocco, to kind of get tried. that. Oh, that he way. Was, wait, 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 wait. Rocco was on your show. Yeah. Oh, hey, good for you, man. Yeah. I'm um, a recurring but, guest. Big, big guest. Big guest. I'm a recurring <laughs> guest, just like I am yeah, on this yeah. show. Good. For, <laughs> you know what? Good for you, Kevin. Nobody cares. <laughs> oh, Rocco goodness. is a Sour Patch Kid on this show, and that's all that matters. <laughs> oh, sugar. All right. And before we get out of here, uh, there will be a lot lot more meme wars that are going to be coming your way. But at the moment here, I just had to share because this one was by far uh, one that I just absolutely uh, really feel like it's a spirit animal for me. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. That so is very good. well photoshopped. That too. Like it, it, it feels like that is you. Like it is skin, me. That is complexion. me. Oh, okay, it is that you that you starred in the movie. I did. I, I could be Ken. It, maybe that's what I'll rip after dark leads to a movie career. That's and cool. That, Ooh, cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just saying. I think I could do it. And that whole other rip after dark is going to be coming your way. But uh, I guess we'll have more meme wars. People loved it. You know who really loved it, though? And then we're getting out of here. Brenda. I bet Brenda loved the memes. Oh, Brenda. <laughs> Brenda. But you know what? I'm seeing like Danielle pop up there and she's saying Lincoln profile. Nudes here. Yeah. So- sorry, Danielle. Brenda's the one for me. And you know who we you know who Brenda supports more than anybody? The damn birds. The damn birds, the baby. Damn no birds. one was happy right. about the birds pulling it off last night. Then Brenda. So. Do not give Brenda a follow. She won't follow you back. But you should follow the rest of our group here. Uh, Jason Benowitz, at Rocco to Sangro. That's Jay Benowitz, 1831. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, there we go. At Own the Chaos for Brad. At Chaos Tricker, 34 for Kevin. At Zach Bollinger, 18. There's at Rocco to Sangro there. Guys, it's time to get out of here because I got to go get ready for this pregame show. So, Jason, appreciate you. You want to sign off with us, Jason? Let's do it. Hell yes, cue it. Rocco, quit dancing. For all of us here at the Ryan Ripken Show, we appreciate you as always. (laughs) Hit that like and subscribe button on the way out. Enjoy your weekend, and as always, have a day, have a night, and we will see you for a brand new episode of the Ryan Ripken Show. Peace. Peace. Damn, we did at the same time. Yeah, look at that.